It is 8.05 and we're in room 206 at Town Hall. Kevin, could you take it away? Two items on the general meeting. Uh, first, deliberation of possible decision regarding the following. Number one, site plan application number 304, landfilling and grading application number 450, Town of Darien and Dillard Property, Nutmeg Lake. Proposal to construct a walking course, cross country path, as well as six parallel parking spaces along Nutmeg Lake, lane adjacent to the north side of the property and perform related set development activities. The path is proposed to move along the central property with a five foot wide crushed stone path along the northwest and south property boundaries with a two foot wide wooden plank boardwalk along the east boundary running north south. The length of the path is 1,440 feet with approximately 420 feet of the length of it as the boardwalk. The section of path located on the Dillard property would be part of the large 15 mile path inclusive of, of the Darien High School property. Should I should I include both of them? Yeah, why don't you, why don't you open And number two, site plan application number 273E, flood damage prevention application number 354A, landfill and regrading application number 53F, Town of Darien, Darien High School 880 Nutmeg Lane, proposal to construct a 5,050 foot cross country path generally around the perimeter of the subject property and perform related site development activities. The five foot wide path will be constructed of crushed stone through both forested areas on the property and grass along the edges of the existing athletic fields. The section of path located on the high school property would be part of a larger 1.15 mile path inclusive of the adjoining Diller property. Thank you. Um, you want to, I guess what I'd love to do is just call out a couple of the main items in each one, Jeremy, just so you know we did hear some neighbor comments and either we addressed the issues or uh, they weren't part of our purview so in fact in number three let's start with the dealer draft resolution in number three fred and i in the second sentence we'll just fill in the date of that yeah. EPC letter yeah. uh because epc has not approved it but they've issued their report so we'll we'll uh fill that in and uh it, Where's it, it? it's a number three on number page three, other two local approvals. Uh, in terms of improvements to the property at the bottom of page two, uh, one important facet was that there were no property setbacks or screening. The path is treated like a, a walkway or something like that. There's no setbacks in the zoning regulations or required to screen anything. Um, and paragraph eight talks about that this will coordinate with the adjacent high school property and that there is some the envisioning of some other minor, whether it be signage or benches or other things in paragraph nine that don't need PNZ approval that are just part of any park, if you will, which go. Jerry, uh, relative to the part about screening, no one ever asked for any screening. Either. That's correct. No neighbor ever came up and said, hey. I don't think that's true. I think the one did. Uh -huh. The rear of his yard close, closest to the path. On the, on the Dillard no. property or the high school? It might have been the high school high property. So it's high school. Yeah. Not this one. Not this one. Sorry. And, and what, what is it because, yeah, okay, next one. <laughs> Just clicked down as I was speaking. <laughs> uh, we, we talk a little bit in here about parking, that there is no parking requirement in the zoning regulations for dedicated parkland. And we talked during the hearing about Woodland Park and Stony Brook Park, which have limited amounts of parking. And this is adjacent to the high school, which has hundreds of spaces. Paragraph 16 and 17 talk about the public comments received. And I think the key condition of approval is that what we talked about during deliberations is that the property boundaries be staked. If there is an area they believe is within 10 feet of an adjacent property. And condition E talks about the fact that the local traffic authority is the responsible party for any signage or enforcement relative to the on-street parking. All right, thank you. Any comments on Darian, uh, I'm sorry, Diller property? No, that's fine. Okay. The 10 feet was, was good. Okay. Yeah, no, that was, uh, I forgot whose idea it was, but I'm not going to take credit for it. So oh, whoever I'll did it. I'll take credit for it. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure I believe you, but <laughs> I'm going to take <laughs> Just joking. Okay, so why don't we hold off on voting on this one, and just so we can talk about because I open, we've opened them both up. 
So 80 high school lane, Jeremy, kind of similar characteristics, but a couple differences, and we can get into the screening discussion here, which I want to point out a couple things. Okay. Correct. One thing that we talk about in uh, paragraph three here, where the path is proposed to be a combination of crushed stone in some areas, grassy surface, just grass in other areas, and they will be using the existing, you may recall, turf baseball field as part of this. It's not part of the, any new construction, but <coughs> it was noted for the record that they will be running across the baseball field during certain times, whether practices or, or meets. In this case, the EPC did approve the project. That's specifically referenced in paragraph six. Paragraph seven and eight talks about the public comments received uh, during the public hearing process. Uh, paragraph 10 and 11, in this case, two trees are specifically called out to be removed. Those are in the western part of the property near uh, some parking spaces. We talked about that during the hearing. You may recall paragraph 14, Joe Canis was brought into peer review both applications, the Diller property and the DHS property relative to the path. And especially in this case where part of the path is in the flood zone, Joe certified that it will meet all the flood regulations. Just to check your wording, Joe Canis did, is not peer review. He was the applicant's the applicant. engineer, right? You're correct. Yes. Thank you, Steve. Yes. Uh, so we should even we can even say the applicant's engineer. Yeah. You're right. It, it doesn't say peer review. You don't have to. You don't have to do anything. Just for the record, yeah. verbally, you just said peer review. Okay. So looking at the conditions of approval, no, I think the key difference here we've also similar to the Diller property included condition E relative to the staking of any path within 10 feet of adjacent property. The difference here is we've included condition D which talks specifically about the role of the Board of Education in terms of managing the usage of the, the track meets and scheduling the meets and things like that. Okay, so let's talk a bit about screening. Um, so in our regs, there's no requirement for screening for a path. Um, it was brought up by a couple different angles, if you will. Um, where the topic was brought up by a couple different angles. Uh, Mr. Mahalski and Mr. Miller, I think, were the two specific people that discussed screening. Mr. Mahalski uh, didn't want any screening disturbed that were associated with the lights. And then, um, actually three neighbors brought it up. One, 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 another neighbor brought up the northern screening, which I'll call the Angerman trees that were put in when the temporary lights the north side of the gym? North side of the gym along the north side of the property from basically that the field area. That was that was put in at the Board of Ed's, I think, request or administration's request that, that those aren't required trees. The trees that are up by the visitor stands, I'll call them the Brenner trees, um, those also weren't, weren't uh, stipulated and none of that's being disturbed. Um, it's clear that, you know, the, the schools put in screening at their desire. It's their care, custody, and control of that property. So then we move over to Mr. Miller's side. There's really not that much screening. Um, but you look at the different activity levels relative to the stadium side and stadium east, baseball field over there, you know, and the track and all the activities that go on there versus the other side. And I think I'm not going to put words in the school's mouth, but I think that's why there's not as much screening on the west side of the um, property so I don't I don't think it's our commitment because it's not required I don't think we should require them you know remember we're talking about a running path that if you calculated the use um, relative to time in a year it's going to be a very 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 small percentage of people passing by and not really disturbing um, we will ensure that it they don't go on the property and I believe the Board of Ed and, and administrations uh, is reaching out in the process of reaching out to the neighbors about some of the other issues that they raised. Garbage. Garbage, drainage. Trespass. And trespass, that sort of thing. So um, I think, I don't know if that kind of met yes, your... Yes, no, no, okay. that's perfect. Okay. So any other uh, discussion on, on this one? Um, very similar. And, and, you know, I, I think we did, again, the staking and the non-encroachment, I think it's pretty good. And, um, you know, hopefully Diller, that property gets cleaned up now too, which is going to be nice and is, uh, is maintained as clean, i.e. people don't dump their yard debris on an active use site, actively used site. So 
I think there's a win-win with it there as well. I wouldn't say it's actively used. No, it will be actively used, is what I'm saying, or passively used. Used, yeah, passively. used site, used. which hasn't been used. So. Um, so with that being said, could uh, I get a motion for the first one, Nutmeg Lane, uh, site application 304 and landfilling regrading application 450 yep. as submitted. Second, Mr. Rand, all in favor? Yes. Perfect. And then uh, site application number 273E, pledge damage prevention application number 354A, and landfilling regrading application number 53F, the high school room. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve. That's yes. my second. Jennifer, all in favor? Yes. Great. Right, just that one day. Will will occur once you get the final. Okay. Moving on to the public hearing, item number one, uh, number three on the agenda. Subdivision application number 624, flood damage prevention application number 108B, Chris No 242, Old Kings Highway South. I think we're just going to say postpone. Right? Postpone. Uh, second item under the public hearing is continuation of public hearing regarding business site plan number 136D, special permit application number 231A, land filling and regrading application number 455, Georgia at Work, LLC, to Squab Lane. You don't have to keep going because we've read this a few times. Okay. Unless okay. you really want Nope. <laughs> hearing originally opened 42319. Perfect. Uh, Jeremy, you just want to get everybody up to speed. What's kind of happened uh, over the last few weeks on over this? The last few weeks, uh, one of the main changes you recall was the applicant came in, changing the plans, eliminating the handicap ramp, but instead substituting a lift with a trellis over it. Uh, it was acknowledged that that would need re ARB review and action. The applicant went before the ARB on May 21st, which is last Tuesday. You have a letter in your packet dated May 23rd, which talked about that meeting. The Architectural Review Board reviewed the revised plans, issued a favorable report with changes. Uh, in other words, TNZ can certainly go ahead tonight, hear more testimony, close the hearing if you wish. The ARB was comfortable that the plans had been moved far enough along that they can finalize some of the details with the applicant at their June meeting. So that's, in essence, the only change. John, I know you submitted an article in the, for the record, which I've given to the commission tonight. Yeah, I mean, I, again, for the record, I just wanted to refer to it in deliberations. I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't put it in. Did uh, Ms. Evitakis get a copy of it? I didn't. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Talks about uh, the trend of coffee shops and booze. <laughs> yeah, kind of a new thing. <laughs> Easy. But, uh, so <laughs> those are really the only changes, I believe, that have occurred since last time was Architecture Review Board. Uh, there's been no public comment received since the last meeting. Um, thank you for the record, Amy Zabatakis, Richard Lockert for the applicant, George at Work, LLC, who's the proposed tenant of the property. Um, I do have the new uh, site plan up, which, as you can see, shows the staircase access and shows the um, lift that was approved by the ARB. Um, I do have, um, just for the record and so that the commission can see, um, I'm not sure exactly the order they're in, but there's a few different um, mm -hmm. angles of view of the renderings of the proposed lift. Those were submitted to the ARB, so I thought the commission might want to take a look at those. But as noted, the ARB is comfortable with the, uh, the lift as proposed and the look of it. Um, so I think that unless there are any questions regarding the changes to um, the plans or the site plan, um, that I can address. I just sort of want to summarize what we're requesting and sort of where we are, just to make sure we're, since it's been a, a few hearings now. Are there uh, any questions I can answer first? Just point out where the lift is going to be on the site. Oh, yeah, the sure. Yeah. So the oh. lift is under the corner of the. Sorry, the, yeah. we're going to have to fix that mic, Amy. I'm sorry. Maybe if you move back to the easel. Thank you, Amy. Okay. So the lift is under the corner of the, um, the, pat the deck. Okay. So it, you can see it a little more clearly in the renderings. We don't have that plan, Amy, just for the... The site so, yeah. plan? You should have, yeah, you should have received that. This is this the old one, right? This is the original one? 
No, this is the one without the. Because we have C12, C, C one, two, three, and 4. That doesn't have anything else. Andy? What do you look at? This is just a blow for the presentation purposes. Oh. Could you say your last name, please? <laughs> there we go. Andy okay. Simulides from Lantec. Could you spell your last name, please? S O U M E L I D I S. Uh, and I, I see, I, I caused the confusion because I kept yelling at him because this was too small and I couldn't see anything. Okay, so got that, it. So we just did a blow up. Go to the blow up. That will be submitted. <laughs> okay. You get your magnifying glass. Like, mm -hmm. I knew I was <laughs> We did a blow up and took some of the call outs and for and, clarity. And we'll take that off the board and submit it for the record. Yes, sir. Yes. Ms. Sabatakis. Sir. The, my, I, mean, I don't know how many times I've been by there, but over 70 years I've been by there a yeah. lot. My impression is that if you go south from Squab Lane, if proper, if the property falls off pretty quickly. That's A. And B, the ramp was, as I recall, positioned to go from approximately the edge of Squab Lane down to the lower level with a stop at the platform. The deck, yeah. So my question is, if the, if the handicap lift is down there and the, let's say the eastern corner of the, of the rendering, how is somebody from Squab Link supposed to get more of it? Or is that not yeah. the purpose? Oh, so this is a good rendering, actually. So I'm looking at the elevation that you okay. submitted. Yes. Or maybe you want to explain it. But well, as I see it, you can go up the lift mm -hmm. along the east side of the building and then link up with the at grade at Squab Lane. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. So the, the, let, let's be clear here. The, the purpose of the lift is not to connect Squab Lane to the driveway. The, the staircase does connect, and that's a, you know, something that we are doing for the town, that the staircase will connect Squab Lane to this parking area in Grove Street. The lift is the handicapped accessible as, access for this restaurant. It is not for per it, sh it will not be used by the general public, and it, that is not the purpose of it. It is to connect the handicapped space that's on the in the in front of the building. Connect that handicapped space. You'll see that the, the pathway from the handicapped space goes directly to the entrance to the lift. A patron of the restaurant will take the lift up to the restaurant pa on the patio level and go into the restaurant. Okay, so if 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 I'm a handicapped uh, person visitor. Mm -hmm. to the I, I have to park down below. Correct. Or I enter the property from down below and take the lift up, but I don't get access to Squab Lane. Um, if you are a visitor to the restaurant, you can come from however, wherever you're coming from, and the access point from Squab Lane is at, is at grade Squab Lane okay, to I the had, patio. I didn't realize that it went. Yes. Okay. I, you good? Thank you. I'm good. But I'm but good. that's not our that's not our that's not our parking. That's the okay. part that's train okay. station parking. Can you remind me again why we went from because when you first presented mm -hmm. this project to the commission, you said this is also going to be an enhancement to the town because mm -hmm. we're going to have this great ramp, mm -hmm. and then we switched to a lift. Mm -hmm. uh, the town. The town we can didn't, answer that. The town <laughs> didn't <laughs> want the enhancement. To say, that Dan Del said he's been well, feeding well, for well, well, I'm yes. Can I answer? Because, uh, sure. uh, you know, I saw the response from our DPW director. And the way that the applicant wanted to design the ramp was not suitable for the town. The town would not let them put that ramp on town property. That's an easy way to just In the put materials. It. Uh, materials right, design had with, to go across you know, town property. And I think that letter from not solely in Mr. Dulcetti's property. Correct. That's correct. Oh, it wasn't right. Okay, so it was off the site. So it was a it was a novel idea, but it didn't meet the standards of our uh, a genteel and a gentile, and uh, so we uh, in the end the town said unless things change, we can't accept this. 
and the applicant chose to meet the needs of their building in a different manner. Okay. So we can't make them put in a ramp. Right, no, yeah. no, no, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the, you know, there's a history of the stairwell that um, you know, precedes this application, but was through a prior application. Um, and one of the desires of the commission at that point were to have stair, at least stairway access from squat to um, the growth street area. Yeah. Which exists today, but yeah, it's, it's becoming bigger. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a uh, wooden staircase right now. The reason I ask yeah. is just because the idea of the of the ramp was appealing to me personally, yeah. and I'm not sure what went on behind the scenes, but I would love to see that as a possibility uh, just coming you, down no, in the future no, at no. all. I mean, if there would be any way to work with the town. Well, I guess the town would have to. I don't want to yeah. take make it hasty, and I don't want to hold up any projects, but you know, that was great. I think that if the town in the future wants to build a ramp, and that ramp then, you know, somehow has to cross the Dulcetti property. I'm certain that there will be a, a, a opening for a conversation. But this, at, neither this applicant nor Mr. Dulcetti at this time are interested in building a ramp on town property under the guidelines that were given to us by the town. Okay. So that's, that's where, how, why we ended up, because we did still need the ADA accessible entrance um, from the handicap spot that we are providing on the property yeah and just to be clear uh, you know just I, I want to be sensitive that you know coming out of that public hearing we directed the applicant and uh, town um, staff to kind of figure out whether or not you know under each guidelines that something can be done and the town was pretty specific on you know the, 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 the metrics the type of materials it wanted to use and that was not I guess suitable to the applicant and that's why they went to the left okay anybody else need to see yeah. Okay, um, any, any other things? questions? <clears throat> Mr. Lane, you have any? Okay. And are there, uh, I do have the project architect and engineer here if there are any questions. So that was on the, basically the only material change. Uh, these renderings were very helpful. Thank Good. you. Um, mm -hmm. okay. Anything else, guys? I'd like to open up to the public if they have anything else to say or questions to ask. Are we going to hear anything about I mean, typically applicants will talk about the theme of food and what's being served, like we heard from Roost, and we've heard from the baker, and we've heard from Cafe Nero. Um, I thought that was what we were discussing with the coffee and the No, alcohol. we didn't hear a menu. We didn't hear about do you want to, do you want to just talk briefly about, like, what kind of theme bakery? It's a bakery. I think you did yes. talk about it, but if you could reiterate that again. Yes, so it's a, um, you know, my, my client's family has had restaurants and, and bakeries elsewhere. Um, this will be a, as I said, there'll be a, a, a retail bakery on the basement level, and then there will be a quick service, counter service type restaurant on the first and second floor where you will, you know, order at the counter, pick up your food. It will not be, we're not intending to have a full service restaurant. And the restaurant will have a, a be serving sort of coffee and more breakfast type foods in the morning, and then will be open in the evenings until one um, serving and then we'll ask for a liquor license. We'll have the opportunity to do some live entertainment there. I, frankly, you know, as a resident of the town, I think this is a really neat addition to the town because it's something very different from anything we have. I know we discussed before trying to say, well, it's like this place, it's like that place, and it's not, which is what I think is really special about it. This really, this application improves a por an area of town that's been, frankly, neglected for some time, which is a little sad since it's the entrance to town right near the train station. So it's really going to improve the area, and it also is going to provide a very new type of restaurant venue um, for that can be enjoyed, I think, by all all members of the town. I think it'll be it'll be attractive both to younger younger people, um, but also to adults in the evening, to commuters in the morning. So is it it's a Greek is it, it's Greek themed? I mean, trying to or it's not. Oh, it's not. Oh, I thought I thought it was a Greek. Sorry, they're a Greek family, so I thought. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful personally as a Greek that there will be some Greek food on the menu, yeah, but it's not excited. specifically a, it's not specifically a Greek restaurant. Ah, okay. Anything else? And is the name going to be Paris Cafe? Uh, that is the working name right now, yes. But no, but it is also not a French restaurant. Either. I know. That's, <laughs> a, that's a family <laughs> name as well. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Jeremy, can I just ask you a question? Sure. Amy said they might have live entertainment. 
do we have to get approval for the library to reset? Because we did well, that's like certainly one, one reason she's mentioning is because they will need to go to the Liquor Control Commission, and there's many, many, many different types of liquor licenses. So what's helpful is she's put on the record before the commission there will be some live entertainment because that's the represent representation that the applicant will likely make to the Liquor Control Commission, and that's got to be signed off by the Zoning Enforcement Officer, Dave Keating. So, because we had to do, I bring it up because we proved approved after the fact live at Timmit and I think um, Black Goose, um, the Darren old Louis, which was Darren Social, and then maybe Ernie's. Right, there are. But that was the same yeah. hearing. Yeah. Right, there were, I think, occasions where there's, and we've talked in the past about sensitivity. You may recall, I think way back yeah. when, maybe right. Centros wanted some live entertainment. Maybe. There might have been others where there was more of a sensitivity so outside question, the downtown. Are we approving this, the entertainment now, or is that no. come later? I mean, it, it, um, well, I think what you could say is, what, can I can I interject ahead. how I'd like to direct this? Um, where we've interjected on entertainment is where there's typically a either a sensitivity to neighbors or um, you know the building houses. A second floor apartments okay so it, in deliberations we can talk about whether or not we will approve entertainment in this application or if we think that you know because of the location there's a sensitivity towards neighbors okay and so uh, let's let's and on that topic I wanted to ask again remind me have you for the record um, requested certain hours of operation associated um, with it or not we Does have I mean the have? we're expecting employees for the bakery in particular to arrive as early as 4 a.m. Um, we are we're we're not quite sure as far as the coffee um, service opening um, we want to make sure that we're available for the commuters that are using the, the train so it could be 5 or 6 a.m. and then yes we're looking for a closing time around 1 a.m. Okay, so safe to say about 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. operating. That's operating hours, yeah. correct. But with employees obviously arriving earlier. That's two it's different like businesses. Standard. The bakery is going to right. open up early. The, no, the bakery, bakery, the retail bakery will not. That's what's a little confusing about it. The, the people baking the goods will get there early. Correct. The retail bakery will be open more regular business hours, but the, you know, there will be some, some of the baked goods, as I said, it's one kitchen, so some of the baked goods will be up in the restaurant where we'll want to have coffee and breakfast type things available for the commuters. Anybody else? All right. I think, did I ask from the public? You did. Uh, so can I get a motion uh, to... Can I just, I just want to, just for the record, I just want to summarize what we're asking for because I didn't, haven't said it sure. since the very first yeah, application. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So just, we are asking for um, a site plan and regrading approval for the improvements to the building, a special permit under 656E to permit the three-story structure. There is no change to the existing building height. We're expanding out, not up, but the grade is changing. Um, and we're also asking for a special permit under 654 B and C for the counter service restaurant um, on the first and second floor and the retail bakery in the basement. Um, and I think I went through, and the rest I was going to talk to you about the hours, but I've already gone through all that. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, thank okay. you. Can I get a uh, motion to close this here? Motion to close. Second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Number three on the public hearing, continuation of public hearing regarding proposed amendments to the regulation to the ZR 3 2019 report by Cumberman Cumberton 16 LLC to be further continued to June 4th, 2019. Um, next item, land claim regarding application number 3457 Charles Bruller, 20 Birch Road. Uh, this application has been postponed. So moving on site application number 306, special permit land filling and upgrading application number 459, the Mather Homestead Foundation in 19 C the Mather Road, proposal to raise the existing barn and the property and construct a replacement barn to be utilized for educational purposes, stall the gravel parking area on the west side of the structure, widen the westerly driveway from C the Mather Road to accommodate school buses and perform related site development activities, including minor regrading the property. Installation of a new septic system. A new barn is proposed to be constructed approximately 25 feet 
east of its current location. The subject property is located on the northwest corner, formed by its intersection of Stephen Mather Road and Brookside Road, and is shown as such as map number one is lot number 58 in the R2 zone. Jerry, you want to say anything? Sure. I think uh, in your package you received the May 1st revised narrative from Attorney Bob Maslin, who's here tonight. The narrative talks about two different aspects. One is the site plan special permit, and the other is the modification of participation limits. Uh, the other item of note in your package was a May 23rd letter from the ARB uh, to the applicant and their architect regarding some of the concerns they had about the design of the barn. In this case, uh, it's a historic property. Obviously, the Mather Homestead has been here quite a while. It's got some historic significance. So the ARB has worked very hard and diligently to make sure that this new barn tries to fit in with the motif and what's going on, and also serves purposes needed. So the ARB sent in the letter, which you have, uh, which talked about the need to return to the ARB for some final design changes and amendments. Uh, I, in speaking with Mr. Madeline, I felt it was important for the applicant to present the application tonight, talk about the other aspects with the expectation if the ARB issues a positive report in June, that it should be simple coming back in late June to the commission. Perfect. Mr. Madeline. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, I'm Robert Maslin, and I am an attorney in town, and I represent Mather Homestead Foundation, which is the applicant. Uh, with me are Lawrence Swenson, with her hand up back there. Uh, she's the executive director of the foundation. Doug DeVest is the project engineer. You don't, you know, Doug, you can, uh, where is he? Oh, here he is. <laughs> uh, and Steve Kittle is here from Kittle and Lee Architects, Project Architects. And Paul Salato is also here. Paul is the builder, contractor, and what have you. And I think there's a member of the family here, and I forgot her name. I apologize. Um, Shame on you. Anyway, we're here really for two things, uh, and there are really two aspects of this application. As you may recall, the uh, commission approved a previous request to treat this as, uh, designate this finally. Uh, since uh, this property has been on the National Registry of Historic Places since the 1960s, uh, we finally had this designated as a protected town landmark. And the reason for that was so that the family could basically donate the property to this new foundation that would operate the property as a very low activity um, historic museum piece. The, the main house has a history all of its own, uh, you've heard all of that before in the prior application. I'm not going to rehash all of that. Uh, there's a, uh, a, a separate single-family residence behind uh, the main residence, and there's this barn. And I, uh, I suppose if you look at the whole site, the barn is one of the more recent uh, structures that was built on the site. The main house, in its early form, I think is older than this country is. Uh, and uh, the barn was built sometime in the early half of the uh, 1900s. Uh, and a baby. just has been used as a garage, a barn. Uh, there's hay bales in it and the usual things that you would, you would you see. You just pointed out on this depiction? I have an aerial, yes. I, oh, well, let me just hand Jeremy what I'm, I'm submitting, which is new things for the record. My photo book, a copy for each of you, three full-size updated uh, architectural plans, there's two sheets, a full size of the aerial so we don't have to take it off the board later. Um, the reduced aerial and reduced architecturals are inside the booklets so that each of you can have one. Uh, the large full size sets are for the uh, staff primarily. Uh, this property as you know is uh, six acres plus or minus on the uh, northwest corner of Stephen Mather Road and Brookside Road. Uh, the intersection is right here in the center of the aerial. Uh, the property runs up pretty substantial uh, property at the northwest corner. There's a significant sized lot behind it that uh, is basically a meadow for most of it. There's an open space alongside the um, uh, 
the homestead property uh, and that eventually makes its way through wetlands to the good the beginnings of the good Goodwise River uh, there's a wooded area that extends beyond uh, to the north and basically the northwest uh, portion of this sort of homestead complex if you will and then this uh, piece up here along the northern edge of the town of Darien is uh, an access way that serves these new Canaan houses in the back and that was previously subdivided off I think about 12 or 15 years ago and developed uh, as single-family homes does um, the foundation own all those lots, Mr. Madeline? Sorry? The foundation own all of the lots you just pointed out? The foundation owns the six acres right here. The open space and this corner. Who owns the property the, behind it then? Behind it? Yeah, right that, there. That's still in the family. Okay, got it. And then on the northeast corner, there's a nice old house with a picket fence and three gates in the picket fence, and they call that the three gates house. To the... Um, on the other side. East of that is Norwalk, and that's an open field that I actually got an approval from Norwalk for a two-lot subdivision. Someone came along and made a donation, and the land trust now owns that uh, property, and that will not be developed. So now we have... The Darien Land Trust? Darien Land, land Trust. No, the we... Darien Land I Trust made owns sure it was, in Norwalk. I made sure it was the Darien Land Trust. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because the Darien Land Trust owns right. the southwest, the southeast meadows, and part of this southeast meadow actually does extend over in Norwalk. So the Darien Land Trust actually owned a piece in Norwalk already, and it made perfect sense to have the same land trust own all of it. Um, so that's where we are. The, the barn is right here. It's kind of middle as you go front to back. And... Um, it's separated from this open space by about 75, 80 feet of uh, uh, woods. The wetlands generally run along the boundary of the open space, so we're, we're well outside the 50 feet. Just, uh, just to clarify for me, the, the lot to the left of the homestead marked open space number one is owned by the foundation, or is that one owned by the family? I believe that's, no, that's, owned, that's there's a zigzag on the... No, no, this one. So if this is the homestead, this one? That's, yes, homestead. Foundation? Homestead. Homestead, yeah. Because that's, it's, it's part of the subdivision. It was set aside and it's, you know. Okay. But Thank it's you. real open space. It doesn't count as land area for lot size or anything. Mm -hmm. like All right. Um, just a quick, you can't see it on this aerial, but I want to show you. The um, well, that's not have to we use this one. No, no, I use this. The uh, barn as it exists today has a driveway that runs oh, thanks. But it's not all colored up so it's hard to see. Let's just go back to that. Driveway comes in from Stephen Mather Road straight back or to the north and then makes a 90 degree right hand turn in front of the existing barn and then it makes its way meandering between the main house and the uh, residence in the back of the house to a little parking area here and then out to here. Uh, this open field here is used for parking in major events, and they've had up to 125 park cars parked there with police assistance, so we know it can handle it. Um, now the photo tour, to kind of let you know what's there and you'll hopefully see why this needs to change. Uh, the purpose for this project is to uh, build a new barn, but to use it as a more of an education um, venue uh, and you'll see in the floor plans that there's a, an open area with seating that can be rearranged in a conference room up on a loft level restrooms the idea is to have folks come in have a little lecture in there before they go into the house because once you're in the house there's really no place to gather any great number of people so the top and this is in sequence in the photo book photo number one is I mean, you can figure out the angles here. Uh, looking toward the northwest, the existing barn, there's an entrance here. 
on the east wall, three uh, overhead garage doors, and then there's another uh, double door over here into the main part of the barn. And then we just go around in a circle. Uh, number two, you're looking at the front of the barn, so to speak, as, as you're looking to the north. Then you come around the sort of an angle from the rear, uh, the uh, side with the window at the top and the doors with just two X's, that's the western wall. And then the northern wall is here with the double X's for a total of four. And then I go a little bit uh, more clockwise and you get more of a head-on shot of the uh, back of the barn. And then we're walking around in a circle and now we're looking to the southwest in photograph number five. Number six is a view almost to where we started from, but you'll notice there's a little sign here. And if you've been out to the site, you'll see a white sign that says, The Barn. You'll see signs like that throughout the property. I'm told that that was an Eagle Scouts public service project. Um, so we're, we're already engaged with the community on uh, one, both one historical question about those and photos service photos levels. Before you, with, with the garage doors, that, that section added later than the, I mean, it looks almost like there's a structure thrown on it. I'm just wondering. I may have an answer. Here. Okay, yes. Oh, the uh, garage I think it, it, it was it was actually not created in the two pieces. It was built at one time and I just, yes. okay. the entire the entire barn was well built in nineteen twenty eight. Okay, got it. Thank you. In one barn raising party, I guess. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and then I have four pictures of the interior uh, of the barn. Uh, the first one is uh, the overhead doors are here on the left, so you're looking toward the west. Uh, not a very uh, a welcoming place if you're going to try to have a class in there. Uh, number, the next photograph, uh, seven, eight, is at the other side of that room looking toward the east. And then we have the uh, three doors, three paneled or window paned doors. So this is looking south. And then the last one, this big rectangle, this light-colored rectangle, is that big door that's on the north wall. So that's a, a sense of what the inside is uh, all about. Uh, is that inside sprinkler, or what is that white pipe there? Uh, Looks like a that lo that's plumbing. Uh, don't know what it's used for at the moment, but if you look at... There is some equipment and mechanicals in here. There's a heating unit up in the corner here in uh, photograph mm -hmm. number eight. Up in the corner, up by the ceiling. Uh, I'm just not sure what that white pipe okay. is. It's a PVC okay. pipe of some sort. It okay. may. We're raising it anyway, so it's we're, fine. We're eliminating it anyway. It's good enough. All right. <clears throat> so that, and I'll, what I'd like to do is I'll, I'll touch briefly on the changes to the activities and then have Doug come up, talk about the engineering and then the architect to talk about the uh, architectural design. We're actually moving the barn over a few feet toward the east. It's slightly larger footprint. It goes from roughly 1,550 square feet to 1,824. It, these are plus or minus numbers it's for a change of about 275 square feet or so. And uh, in addition, there's it's all new finished space inside. Um, and in addition to the ground level is roughly 250 square foot loft level for a conference room. Um, <clears throat> we've gotten responses back from DPW. They're all fine. Uh, we have a couple of comments from the fire marshal and we're working through those. One has to do with turning radii on the, uh, at the entrance and uh, within the site for fire trucks. And um, uh, I was talking to Mark McEwen today about the sprinkler, uh, the new, the current regulations regarding sprinklers. Um, Can I just and stop you? Yeah, I think Jeremy already mentioned the ARB uh, status. So, again, we're looking at landfilling and regrading, and special permit use for activities that would occur in the barn. 
and, and then we're site we're, plan for the barn. Yeah, site, site plan, plan. And for the barn. Changes to the driveway and parking area. Adjacent okay. To it. Just to be clear, and uh, we're we'll be awaiting ARB's final recommendation yes, as well. My okay. expectation would be we finish our presentation, leave the hearing yeah. open, so we can we can address yeah. the ARB. Um, in my narrative, I quote the existing activity rules, and uh, I talk about we uh, what we would like to do to increase those, and those are on page three. In the year and a half or so that this uh, property has been uh, functioning, uh, there have been uh, a few small groups. Uh, school kids go in during field day. They stop at different places in town. This is one of them. They stop. They learn a little bit about uh, uh, the history. They, they get a tour of the house. Uh, they've been using a barn at a neighbor's property because there's really no place large enough to handle uh, uh, even small groups on this site. Um, and so what we're proposing is that large events, uh, we increase the maximum from 70 to 150. It may sound like a lot that we're doubling, but there was an event with about 150 people in it, and it went very smoothly. Uh, we're not aware of any neighbor complaints. The traffic. Uh, uh, was under control. The parking was all fine. They parked in the meadow and uh, had police uh, handling the parking and uh, traffic and all of that. For the mid-size events, uh, increase from 30 to 60 visitors uh, on the site. And for small events, change it from 15 to 30. Uh, with the barn, we'll be able to accommodate that. Again, for the school kids, they come in buses. So we're not dealing with a great, great deal of traffic. You're not changing the frequency, though, right? Not, not at this point, no. <clears throat> it's in here. It's in here. Actually, what we're really doing... No, no, you still the, have at to come this in point with the was schedule. my look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still have to come in with the schedule. Yeah. It's just the numbers change. Yeah, what yeah, no, what no, different no. category? No, the, at this point about the frequency is why you got the, the, the look. Oh, I got the look. Yeah. But we still have to come in. Next year, yes. you'll okay. get another schedule. You've already seen okay. the schedule for this year. But again, for the record, the frequency is not changing. You just want to adjust the limitations right. within the frequencies. Yes. And relative to the sentence, events have been broad managed. According to who? Were you there? No, but Lauren Swenson was here, and she can testify directly that, to that. She can testify. Uh, oh, for the record, if you have questions, yes. For the record, we can submit a copy of Lauren's email to me talking about uh, the events that occurred in 2018. Oh, yes, yeah. And that's already been submitted to the board, right? Uh, to the commission. And um, along those lines, have you gotten any complaints in the uh, no. zoning enforcement Junior. officer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. I think you've had enough of me. Doug can uh, yeah. talk about the engineer. Vesa, professional engineer. Uh, we were asked to um, prepare a site plan for the uh, new barn, as Bob mentioned, and also to look at a new septic system that will serve just the barn and the functions in the barn itself. Uh, did soil testing, found an area of uh, septic approval, uh, a suitable area for septic. Uh, that's been submitted to the health department and was approved on April 25th, I think it was. April 25th. Um, so that has so that served that purpose. Um, also, widen the driveway on the um, Stephen Matter roadside to, for, to accommodate the buses coming into the site itself and provide a little gravel parking area uh, for some cars and also the buses to come in, turn around, and go back out the same direction. We didn't want to change any of the, any of the driveway going out towards Brookside because again, that's all part of the historical um, significance of the building itself. Um, the building will be served by the individual well on the site itself, which is a well that's active that will service that services the existing cottage and the uh, residents, and it will also serve the barn itself. Um, we looked at the uh, stormwater management for the site itself, and 
the existing barn is water just goes on the ground. Over, there's no, no gutter system on the house or the barn itself. So we're picking up the water from the uh, barn and bringing it to a series of coltex um, and detaining the water for the two 10, 25, and 50 year storm and all it shows a zero increase in runoff for the site itself. And there's no coltex on site? None right now. No. So it's no. just basically running off. Right. And so, so this is so this is an, an improvement for the site right now itself. Um, the, dr the driveways are gravel now. They're going to stay gravel, keeping with the characteristics of the um, of the property itself. Uh, erosion control, sill fence, all down gradient of any uh, any cuts and fills. Um, relative to cuts and fills, um, we did a quick analysis of this. We've got about 300 cubic yards of material. Uh, required for the septic, that will include select fill, which is required for septic purposes, and a common fill, and a probably about 60 yards of material being cut um, when the barn's being pushed 25 feet um, east of where it is right now. So we're going to do a little cutting to get the grade to work on the east side of the building. So, so we've got bringing more fill, and then we're taking out. But again, mostly <coughs> it's for septic system purposes because of ground. And you're moving it to accommodate that just little parking area, basically. Right, because there's a, root, a little root cellar. Um, right here, we, we wanted to maintain, so we pushed it further to the east that way. It also gives it a little more area for some you know, parking, things like and that. And that's still shielded by the woods. Correct. Okay. This is all woods, basically, from here over is all woods. I mean, to the north, it kind of comes around, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken, right? Right. Okay. Um, we're not, and then the site was flagged for wetlands all along, basically, in the open space area. Uh, we're well outside the upland review area for, EI, for um, EIC. So our, our EPC. So we are. Um, so we didn't have to go before that for that commission for this. So again, we're just before you for the site development plan, grading and filling, special permit. Um, I believe that's really. Um, and as Bob mentioned, um, there was a comment from the fire marshal regarding um, returning radiuses. I looked at that quickly today. Um, we will have to increase the radius um, on Stephen Matter Road. Uh, entry to the intersection of Stephen Matter Road and the driveway, and a little bit on the inside here. So minor, minor tweaking of the radius is. We're trying to maintain this uh, large tree here at the corner here against a significant tree. It's fairly significant, so we want to try and maintain that. So <coughs> we'll just tweak a little bit on that inside there and outside here, and we'll be able to accommodate buses and and the uh, fire fire apparatuses as well. So any questions? I'd be glad to answer them. Any questions? Okay. Okay, the, the, at this point, the, we'll let that speed come up. Just for the record, the tracking pad is temporary. Correct, yeah. it is. That's correct. That's mostly to get the service the right. septic areas itself. And the parking lot's not striped at all. It's no, just gravel. Just gravel. So. Uh, good, uh, good evening. My name is Stephen Keedle. I'm an architect uh, with Keedle and Lee Architects. Okay, so the uh, building is relatively simple. Um, it's a 32 feet wide by 57 feet long structure, uh, 18, 24 square feet. And the intent uh, is to create a gathering space for lectures and exhibits really in the service of the homestead. And it is designed in what could be called a New England barn vernacular, which is what you might typically see um, around in Fairfield County. Um, the uh, first floor plan that you see here is configured um, with chairs that will be used in a, a lecture type scenario um, where we have the western wall is uh, really a blank wall projecting if there was to be a video, uh, the podium and then seats arranged um, again for that type of use. To the east side that goes towards the house, there are two bathrooms left and right um, and then that really serves as the entrance or the exit towards the house. If there are school children coming, most likely the bus would pull up to the south, uh, which faces a Stephen Mather Road, uh, where there are two doors going in, they'd come in, they'd gather, uh, perhaps have a small lecture or see an exhibit, and then exit going out towards the house. By moving the barn 25 feet close to the house, it does allow a little bit more proximity uh, for large groups to uh, meander through, through the garden and up to the, the house property. Um, there is a very small kitchenette that really just serves um, there's a refrigerator and a microwave really just for people in that um, who may be working there to eat up lunch and so forth. And then on uh, the east side above the eastern entrance there is a loft uh, with a stair that goes up to, to the left and around um, and that would primarily be used for the board members 
um, administration and, and so forth. And then it's opened to the main space itself. There are two small closets, uh, actually large enough though to be able to stack the chairs uh, and tables and so forth. And then there's a coat closet over to the east side, uh, as well as a, a water fountain for convenience. This is the elevation. Uh, the elevations were reviewed by the ARB. Um, the main comments from the, we've met with them twice was mainly on the, uh, the fenestration, the windows and the doors, the types of windows, uh, and also the fact that uh, even though it, it emulates an old barn, it is used for today's purposes. So on the elevation that faces the house, uh, we have a seven foot door by seven foot eight that allows for uh, a good egress, ingress, and then a, um, a sliding a barn door that you might find typically um, in, a, in a barn structure. Uh, the siding is typical uh, barn siding, one by eight, uh, painted uh, a barn red color. And if I turn the um, board over, you see at the top, the south side that faces uh, Stephen and Amanda Road. Um, and again, the windows have been moved up so that we have maximum wall space, really for exhibits and so forth. Um, again, a barn door that can cover these doors. These are eight-foot doors with a transom window above. And then on the uh, north side that faces the meadow is really a, uh, a mirror image of the same. This view here is looking towards the east, um, going out to the, uh, the house proper, and then you see the loft with, uh, with a railing. <coughs> Heating and cooling will be a, a propane gas furnace, uh, which will be located above the loft in a, um, a mechanical space. But the burn itself uh, will be a cathedral ceiling um, open, to, open to the space. Um, I think that, that pretty much covers. Uh, and, and so, what's the outstanding item with ARB at this yeah, the, point? Yeah, the main thing that we talked about. We've talked about uh, the colors and the materials. Okay. We talked about the roof a little bit, um, mm -hmm. and uh, we have decided to go with an asphalt roof um, in a sort of a driftwood color. Um, uh, but the, the main point which we've talked about quite a bit was the the windows and types of doors, in particular. Okay. In the I think in the first packet that you may have received, the windows had a lot more smaller panes. Um, and there were three windows. We went to the two doors really for ease of use for large groups to come in and out. And then we talked about the sizes and types of, of glazing. Um, the way we left it the last time was um, I think they actually preferred no um, panes on those doors as it was shown on the eastern elevation that goes to the house, which is a slightly shorter door only because the, the, loft, um, the loft space above. Um, I yeah. think we'll have those resolved by the next time. Okay, so this plan is in response to some of their comments, but you just haven't... Uh... Yes, and the actual the plan configuration inside hasn't changed. The yeah. door locations haven't changed. Um, it was really just the treatment. Just the finishings, as yeah. we call it. Okay. That's the detail that we don't get into. Yeah, do you have to keep it open for this? Uh, yeah, I think the Airbnb, there were a number of changes they wanted to see. So it, unlike okay. the two squab lane where they said, yeah, we're, we're close enough here, they want. Okay. And again, it's a recommendation. We can, you know, if the applicant and ARB do, come to an impasse, then I guess that's where we become the arbiter. Right. So, so we, we don't want to go there. <laughs> this has been a, um, um, an example of working together with the ARB on a very, probably one of the most historic sites around here um, we like they've been to they've the been detail. there twice yeah. good um, and it's the system the system is working good all right and I, I don't know we have a couple of uh, minor little tweaks like turning radius as Doug mentioned um, the fire marshals uh, comment about sprinklers I don't think that really involves you uh, much uh, because that's an in, that's a yeah building code fire code issue not necessarily a use issue so and so that's where we are okay uh, let's open up public comment then what, oh uh, I questions. just to uh, say face here Jane Nickerson is here Jane is one of the family members one of the descendants of Stephen Mather uh, and she is now we can see Jane now we can see Jane <laughs> I apologize for not no, remembering okay. her name before um, they look, they do look alike because they're all brothers and sisters and uh, very historic, very generous of them to make this possible. 
Okay. Uh, anybody in Just the audience? Re real quick, Bob. The, the second floor conference does not require ADA access, correct? Sorry? Second floor conference does not require ADA access. I don't believe it does. It's not big enough. Thank you. Anybody uh, like to speak on this? Hmm. Oh. Did you have any conversations with the neighborhood about you know, some of these changes? I know you had an information session. I know you noticed everybody. Um, I just I didn't attend if there that. Was, um, okay. just yeah, would you mind just coming up and like, yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, you got to, you got to tell them who you are. Yes. Again, thank you for having us. I'm Lauren Swenson. I'm the executive director of the Homestead. Um, we did have an information session last Wednesday night, um, so we sent that out to all of the neighbors that we knew of and had contact information for, and then obviously in the demo process, the, the people that you know required to be notified were. Um, we actually ended up sending out to our full mailing list, um, so some of you probably received yeah. that. Um, so there certainly was an opportunity for people to come and voice concerns, and there were none um, at that. So you know we feel really good about this. I mean, we do feel like we really respected the wishes of the neighborhood and the events that we've had. Um, again, we are not increasing the frequency of events. We just don't want to have to cap our ticket sales, and we have a lot of disappointed people when we have to do that right now. Okay. Um, so. And uh, I, I guess Lauren answered your question regarding any comments or criticism that you asked me. Okay. I just yes. want to make sure we yes, cover that. Yes, because yeah. she's the applicant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so I guess we'll keep this open. Unlike the last time. There, when there was neighborhood concern, yeah, I know. I mean, it, think what we've done is what the foundation has done is not unlike the Dairy and Wine, made sure everything was managed properly. The programming is is uh, not intense. It's, it's a spectacular asset to the town. There's no denying okay. that. Um, no doubt. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to continue the hearing to June 25th at 8 p.m. in this room, and it's likely that. Uh, We'll just focus on anything else with the ARB. Doug DeVesta, the engineer, was here tonight to talk about drainage and grading. Uh, do you think you'll need Doug back in, on June 25th? I'm seeing, I'm seeing now. He may be here on other things, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, unless you have to change something. You don't need Bob on the other mm -hmm. thing, too. Well, we'll see how it all fits. <laughs> so, okay. no, that's, that's the continuation. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, uh, your, thank you uh, very much for thank you very much for considering this. And succinct way, application. Everything on the boards you have in the record already. So okay, great. You don't need to leave anything else. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Ready next. Uh, number six on the public hearing um, continuation of public hearing regarding coastal site plan review number three forty nine. Application number 454, Michael and Teresa Casalo, Monto Beneath Beach Drive. Proposal to construct a new pool, spa, and terrace and form related site development activities within a regulated area. The 1.01 acre subject property is located on the south southern terminus of Tokenique Beach Drive at its intersection with Butler's Island Road. It is shown on assessor's map number 67, spot number 84 in the island zone. You have in your packets a copy of the recently granted ZBA variance from May 15th, uh, which, which was granted for additions to the previously approved house. You also have Attorney Wilder Gleason's May 22nd cover letter with the recently revised plans, which account for, which are basically the plans the ZBA did approve. And the key difference here is the pool has been turned 90 degrees, such that it complies with all applicable setbacks, did not need a ZBA variance. The applicant is here tonight for a coastal site plan review. The property, as you know, is right on Long Island Sound and a filling and regrading application. The house, you may recall, was specifically designed to be outside the flood zone, so no part of the work is in the flood zone. And the commission previously approved these plans, but basically you're here tonight solely on the issue of the pool and the small spa and terrace around it. The commission previously approved the house, which is now under construction, and additions and alterations to the house approved by the ZBA did not require coastal site plan review or land filling and regrading. So those are already through the system. What we're looking at tonight solely is the pool. Mr. Um, I have extra copies of 
what's up here. This is the site plan, the survey that shows the driveway in the old driveway that's going to remain the new turnaround here. The house is in yellow. Um, we the additions to the house were crosshatched in pink. And then the concern is the zoning setback is called out in orange. And the pool itself now meets the setbacks. It's been it's redesigned wild. to fit. No, it fits right in there. Fits right in there. It's 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 considerably smaller, but it was something that we felt we needed to do to work with the ZBA. This survey uh, had the pool equipment in an area that required a variance. That has been modified. It was modified just the day that we submitted the revised plans um, of the 15th or so. And now it's going to be on the south side of the pool within the buildable area. Um, so. That's reflected in the plans that were submitted to you, prepared by Glengate. And um, so what that's shown here. Um, and it's here's the residence. Again, the orange is the you setback. Went backwards on. Am I, uh, you know what? Yeah. Would you mind just do don't, yeah. that, 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 that would be right? helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank work? you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so then we're all oriented. Yeah. So this. Uh, yeah, this is the company club side. Okay. Long Island Sound is down here. And this is where Ned Good now lives, and he also owns the property behind us on the, on the north side. So he has the north and the west sides. Company club is to the east side, which is at the bottom, and Long Island Sound is on the south side. So the pool equipment in the reduced survey was right in here and we moved it here hmm. okay so now it's just on the south side of the pool there is um, it's a six and a half foot pool at the deep at the uh, at its deepest it's now I think 15 feet by 23 or so 23 by, nine. 23 by 9 sorry so it's not that big and what they did is they expanded the terracing up here so there's more filling and a nice level lawn area here with a substantial amount of landscaping, tons of arborvitae, et cetera, screening the Goodnow property. And we're here for CAM. We're here for landfilling and regrading if necessary. We're doing some work within 15 feet of the property line possibly. Where's the CAM line? The CAM line is the whole property. Oh, okay. Which is 1,000 feet. So. Okay. And we're outside of the flood zone, which is elevation 13. We're up at 17, 18, 21 here for the house and, and so on. So uh, you couldn't put the pool outside the camp? We're, we're not doing that. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not putting it outside the, uh, so yeah, and there is no adverse effect. Yeah, yeah. We are, um, you've got a report from Doug DeVesta who reviewed the plans and said there's no coastal impacts. We are proposing soil and erosion controls. Those are shown on the uh, plans that were submitted. There's, um, Doug DeVesta had a set of them and Glengate had their own with silt fences around here. And then, because this elevation, the good amount of property is higher, it's construction fencing along the property line. Um, that's basically it. Um, there's extensive landscaping, not only along the perimeter of the, uh, along the property line, but we have a series of retaining walls that are going to be exposed. And so we're softening the view of that from the club, which is down low. Um, that's actually the club parking lot. Um, how much uh, fill coming in or out? I don't know. Brandon, you have, to come, you have to come up and identify yourself, Brandon. This is Brandon Jones from Glengate. He's the pool designing company. Hi. Good evening. Um, approximately 170 yards. Yeah. Yeah, coming in or out? In, coming in. in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Mr. Lewis, I have a question for you. So you're saying that the pink, the two different areas in pink, are the um, changes from what the commission approved? No, what those are actually the commission approved those. Staff approved those on an administrative basis. Those are the second floor over the previously approved house. There's the solid over the three car garage is a playroom, recreation, study room for the kids, mm -hmm. which uh, expanded the building envelope. It was a second story above a one story three car garage, and then the cross hatched pink is a two-story living room. It had a two-story space like this. And the family that's buying it has five kids. They needed a fifth bedroom. So that living room is now a one-story space with a bedroom above. 
but there was no change in the building envelope. We just did it all within the approved plans. And I'm curious, the heights of, the reason I asked is because I was down there and, and this whole side looks monstrous, like huge hotel. Well, there, there's a landscape plan that, that we can see. Monstrous. Yeah. It I was mean, because before. it's starting up on like a huge rock. It, well, it's also because it was, the, what happened is there was a, lot, a fair amount of screening that you didn't see before that's been taken down. Yeah, there was. Yeah, there was. So there will be some well, softening of that. You and I know that Tiffany Club opened this weekend and there were lots of comments about how huge this house was. I didn't hear any. <laughs> But I wasn't yeah. listening <laughs> to that. I, I really didn't hear. Um, I do know that um, the club itself, uh, the president of the club wrote a letter of support. I believe that's part of the record. And uh, Carl Goodnow, who acts on his father's behalf, has submitted a, uh, a letter of support as well. Or, and I don't know if you have those in the file, but I've got extras here for right, everyone. Thank you from the Tokeny Club, uh, Chris Hughes, is the president. And, ju and just to be clear, you called out the areas of screening and softening right. in which you're changing, but there's going to be yeah. additional throughout the yeah. property. And Jeremy, all this um, patio that looks like it's going to be less than 20 feet from the setback, you know, from the property line, that's all Right, the setback not for a, a patio variance. would be 8 feet. Yeah. And so the height's not very either, no, right? It's, it's all. Well, we're well within the height. We're like yeah. 28, 29. Feet. Remember, that it's seems, average grade. It's yeah. An average. Yeah. yeah. So it's and and this is a really, really high piece of property. Yeah. This is a difficult property. We start at five down by the driveway. Yeah. And we're up at elevation 23. We're at the wow. northeast corner of the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Are they planning to plant any more screening on that side? I, that south on, side? On, on, what, on the close side? This is just my. I, I honestly don't asking. know, but I know that um, if the club put in a request, I think that Mancini's would. I, I know nothing. You about know, it's the sort of thing that um, if there was a concern about it, I think that they would be amenable to presenting something. Uh, yeah, because they don't own any property right next to the driveway. They own nothing. The oh, club. they do. There's, uh, I mean, the, the, no, the club, I mean, doesn't. The beach drive comes in here, and then there's the stone wall, which is the property line that separates the club property from the, what is the Castello Mancini property. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, that, there is some room here on Mancini. There, there's also, there's, the club could soften it, but that's, there's a, a small. It's pretty low. It's, yeah. a, it's low, and it's a, it's a strip about five, six feet wide of grass between the pavement and the, the um, stone wall. Right, right, right. So. Okay. Anybody else questions? Oh, for the record, we are putting in Cultex, so we're treating the first inch of flush so the water quality is improved. We're asking for a waiver of the storm management plan because we're right in the coastal area and you don't want to do on-site detention. So Got it. that's part of it, too. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else, guys? Ladies? Anybody from the audience like to speak? All right. Uh, I get a motion to close this public hearing. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ryan? Second. Ms. Rita? All in favor? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Great. Uh, number seven in the public hearing general state plan review number 341 flood damage prevention application number 395 land and grading application number 456. Donald Kathy Alman, 55, Arrowhead Way, proposed for raise of the existing single fender dwelling build a new house into the same location, with a new driveway deck, and storm water management, and some consistent in the form related to economic activities within regulated areas, 1.17 acre subject property is located on the east side of Arrowhead Way, approximately 450 feet south of its intersection of Winding Lane, and is shown on assessment map number 69 and lot number 18 in the R1 zone. This is a uh, house teardown and rebuild. The new house is in almost the exact same location as the existing. In your package, you have a copy of the EPC approval, EPC 11-2019, which was issued in May. There are some wetlands, inland wetlands on the subject property. The commission is looking at it tonight for coastal site plan review, flood damage prevention, and landfilling and regrading. The new house will comply with the flood regulations and engineer Doug DeVest is here to talk about uh, the grading, the, his coastal report, drainage, flood impacts, things like that. I can do that. Yeah. Okay. 
Good evening, Doug Vesta, Professional Engineer, represent the applicant. Uh, on the board here, you'll see the existing conditions. Uh, we've got the existing house that was built in 1958, uh, remodeled in 2005, according to the assessor's card. Uh, in 2008, uh, we, we did a septic repair on this for selling filling septic system, which was located in front of the house. It was located up uh, to the north of the existing house. Um, again, we're proposing what Jeremy mentioned is that uh, we're proposing to raise that existing house and raise it up so it meets the flood zone requirements. We're in, L we're in the flood zone AE 13. First floor would be at least at 14. Um, so what you see here is the dark, the black is the proposed house. Um, the cross, I mean, the black is the existing house, and you can see the cross hatches are the uh, proposed uh, new, new footprint. Um, the garage is being moved from the original location, which is a front load garage coming in off of Arrowhead Way with the driveway. Hard to see in that one. driveway is located here, coming into a front load garage itself, uh, and they're having problems with water coming off the Arrowhead Way, going down the driveway towards the existing garage area. Uh, so what we're proposing to do is to do I want a courtyard L-shaped house um, that will shift the driveway to the south, close off the upper, uh, the existing northern driveway, come down to the south end to a little parking court with a side low garage here and towards the front part of the courtyard itself. Um, the house is being raised up, as I mentioned, to elevation uh, 14, uh, 5 for the first floor. The lower level is at 7.11, which is what the existing is right now. Uh, we'll remove the lower doors, say, keeping the same foundation, allow the water, uh, any flood waters to come in and recede without having any hydrostatic pressure against the wall. Uh, I think during Sandy they had some issues, so they we get this house up and get it out, out of the flood area. Um, the site, as you see, this is the flood zone from AE 13 to X, so you see the whole property is within that flood zone itself. Um, the septic system, we redid some soil testing out there. We're putting a new septic system in for the new house. Um, found super soils up on the northern section put above the existing system. Phil will be brought in for that to meet the minimum requirements above um, ledge rock. Um, the air front portion of the house will be raised also to meet the le level of the garage and to the first floor. Um, health department did approve this um, septic design, so that's all approved. Um, we are looking at uh, doing water quality versus a stormwater management. We're asking for a waiver of the of the of the full stormwater management uh, design in this. So we're, we've got a, a section of um, drainage on the east side of the property and on the south. This will take care of the uh, portion of the house, and the lower one will take the portion of the driveway, which will handle the first flush, which is the first inch of runoff. So uh, again, again, try not to retain water within the property. Right, because we're, we're, we're in the lower third, because once you get past here, it's only one or two houses, then right out onto Low Island Sound. So we're right at the lower reaches of the um, watershed itself. Um, you have three sets of Celtic systems, right? No, only two. One, two, that's drainage. That's a septic up here. Oh, I'm sorry. That's septic. That's, that's a pump system, because it's, it's, up, it's uphill, it's up yeah. so <laughs> you got to go up, you got to pump it up to it, so not a problem with that. Um, so yeah, do you have a generator on this design? I'll most likely have a generator. Yeah. I think we did add a generator, we have a generator yeah. right yeah. here, which yeah. all be at yeah. elevation 14, one foot above the flood elevation. Even if there wasn't a generator, uh, we have one day of storage, at least one day of storage, and it's on, they're on a wall, they're on a, a run water service here, so not a well, so forget that idea. Um, yeah, yeah, we're going to say the well wouldn't work if there wasn't Right, power exactly. Power. You can have a generator and you don't have, you yeah, can't no, I, take, yeah. I mean, there's a whole issue. It's, it's very important to have a generator and a design like this, I yes. would imagine. Okay. Yeah. Um, as you know, Tokenik probably does lose a power pipe quite often down there, I'd imagine. So, um, it comes in spurts, it seems. We've got approximately, with the septic area, the fill for the septic area in front of the house, we've got about 1,100 cubic yards of material uh, to be brought in. That includes select fill and material for the septic. Um, also, some we're putting a select fill below the, underneath the grass slab there. Again, that's mostly to allow, because um, this, this wasn't, 
It's going to act as a dam for the sewage, so we're allowing the water to go flow underneath the building there. Um, we did that another job up here in town um, of last year. So, so that's again approved by the town. Uh, we're looking so approximately 1,100, 1,200 cubic yards of material being brought in uh, to raise the house up and meet the meet the flood zone requirements. That's approximately about 78 truckloads of 15 yards of truckload. So, so again, we're looking at that. Uh, the increase in pervious surfaces is minimal. Um, based on what we're proposing here, we're increasing approximately about 270, 287 square feet of impervious area increase. Hey, Doug, so. just go back to your the fill mm -hmm. numbers. Could you just repeat them? Because okay. we've got about 1,200, about 1,200 cubic yards of material yeah, okay. coming in. Um, very little, almost not, none, none going out because we've got to try to raise this house up to the elevation 14. The existing house right now is at elevation 11, so we've got to bring it up at least three feet. The, I mean, you usually use 20 cubic yards per truck. Don't 15 you? to 20? Yeah, most 15 trucks. is more conservative. Correct. Correct, yes. Okay. Because yep. you said 70 trucks, I'm thinking. 78, seven, 78 trucks at 12, at, at 15, yard, 15 so cubic yards. Right. If they were 20 60, cubic yards, right. it'd be 60 trucks. Correct. Correct. That's Correct. My, right. my man. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can see by our cross section is how much material is being brought in. The cross section is right through the septic and through the garage, part of the. Um, so you can sort of see, you get an idea. This dash line here is your existing grade, and you can see the material coming in for the septic alone is you know, raising it up a couple of feet there. So, Got so again, okay. that's what we're looking to do there. Um, that's really it. Again, we've been before the, uh, um, EPC. That's been approved by them. Uh, Health Department's approved it, so now we're here before you to um, get, your, get your approval on this as well. Okay. Any questions? Anybody out in the audience? Okay, a motion to close the hearing. Motion to close. Jennifer? Second. Steve, all in favor? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Current meeting, time permitting, item number 10, and the agenda, deliberation process decision regarding the following administrative section number 339 1 2019, Joe Aguirre, 40 Swift Lane, located rear building lot in session with provision. 17 subject property under first division section of the Connecticut General Statutes and to construct a new shared driveway for two proposed lots under section 339 of the Jarrett's regulations have less than required lot width in the frontage for Swiss Bank. You have a draft resolution in your packets. Uh, you may recall this is a two lot division creating a rear lot and one of the issues was the specifically calling out some of the setback dimensions that's called out in proposed condition A, uh, building coverage, uh, setbacks, and then certainly any future development would have to return to the commission for coastal site plan review. Maybe they'll be working in flood zone, maybe regrading, it depends on the exact development. But this would allow them to demolish the existing house and divide it into two pieces by filing a map in the Darien land records. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I was just going to say, I, I was thinking about this one quite a bit. I'm not inclined to support the subdivision of this um, just due to the fact that it would change the coast dramatically. I think it's overcrowding, and I think that. Um, I don't see the hardship that would require the subdivision being approved. Um, yeah, they don't have to prove a hardship. So they, this well, because they need a variance. If there wasn't a variance request, so variance. no, oh, you just said not a variance, but it would not. It, the driveway wouldn't fit into the regs, correct? Wait, wait. Well, I'm sorry. Let's let's. You said variance. Let's be sorry. clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just again, this is right. all. No, we have to be technical. Yeah. In section 339, it it talks about. Lots having frontage less than the minimum width specified, only allowed in the one and two acre zones. And it talks about some of the criteria relative to that. You can't have a rear lot behind another rear lot, that the driveway can't be too steep, uh, and the driveway shall be safe, the maximum grades. Uh, so it does allow the commission to approve lesser frontage than normal in the one and two acre zone. Uh, allow or, you know, I guess the question allow or we would be required to approve it? Uh, Do we have discretion is my question, I guess. 
may no. be reduced to 25 feet. Sub the frontage may be reduced subject to compliance with the following specific standards which shall be determined by the commission at a general meeting. No portion of the lot between the street line and the building shall have a lesser width than the frontage. So In other words, you can't go and make it even narrower. Yeah. Uh, the grade and alignment of the narrow part of the lot shall be adequate for a driveway that can permit okay. safe and convenient access. Uh, and Grading wasn't an issue, so I want to check each one out. So the first condition, was that met? Correct, yes. Y yes, okay. It's narrow, right? it, it didn't get narrower. Didn't get okay. narrower. Okay. The grade and alignment that of, wasn't an issue, of right? such narrow part of the lot shall be adequate for a driveway that can permit safe and convenient access. All necessary environmental approvals shall be secured. Secured in advance. There was none yeah. needed here. Uh, the intersection, this is 339C. The intersection of the proposed driveway with the street shall be safe in terms of sight lines, gradient, and related factors. Maximum grades of the driveway shall not exceed 10%, and the first 30 feet shall not exceed 2%. None of those were issues, right? None of, no issues. And D, no rear lot shall be behind another rear lot. And that, there was a little discussion about that, but there wasn't, right? We weren't creating another rear lot. Correct. And then it talks about the minimum distance shall be added, right? The 50 feet added, which they showed on the plans. All utility lines shall be underground. Uh, and then it talks also about the front yard shall not be measured. It talks about how to measure a front yard, which Mr. McDougall went through at the hearing. So just, I'm totally sensitive to your comments, and I don't like this subdivision either. But just to remind the commission that this is an administrative kind of rendering. We only have discretion on confirming that it meets the requirements of subdivision. The fact that I don't like it and I got the sense that other people really don't like it. <laughs> and yeah, I'm not gonna point any fingers, but you know, I just, during the questioning, isn't it enough to uh, deny the application of subdivision? Because no, they, understand. okay, so just, just, I wanna set you guys straight and I will be the first to say I don't like the layout. I don't like the, um, a, again, the renderings were just possible renderings. I thought um, that there, there was, because I yeah. drove down to the property and it's extremely narrow, especially. Yeah. It, and it's extremely crowded right now with driveways and it's gates and you have to wind. So I, I was under the impression that there was something that was not conforming to those laws. Are you saying that we, that this subdivision does conform to all those? Yes. It's Including the driveway. So what, what was my confusion about the driveway? Well, the, the, the <laughs> end, the Swifts Lane, this is the terminus of Swifts Lane. So Correct. It's all Which the way is the a private side. road. Which we saw. No, I don't think it is a private road. It, I, if it's got I gates believe, it's I believe it is a private road. Private it road. says right when you right. come in, it's private road. Um, yeah. So these, there the would be one driveway that would continue to go south and then a driveway would, which would shoot east, kind yeah. of like the existing driveway, which kind of makes a sharp left turn. The, the new driveway would continue to go south. And so there'd be the lot lines, if I recall, basically split the existing house to where the existing house is now. Right. So one would be a little more towards the barn on the east side of the property, and one would be, if you call it where that parking areas further. I mean, there's so many reasons south. not to like it, but I don't think there's reasons that we can deny it, in Ex my opinion. Except for that rear on rear thing, depending on your kind of interpretation of that. I, I, well, right. I, in the discussion, I made McDougal redo the line again, because he kept saying this is the rear line, this rear line wasn't marked, right? So he- He, uh, he, he clarified, clarified that. He clarified it in his testimony. Yeah. Whether mm -hmm. the subdivision that's got it, that's a different story. I mean, I, I don't support it either um, because it's setting it up for a variance. Could be. Right? It, and the lot coverage is like, you know, 6%. Yeah. I, I, again, it doesn't, and the you know, and they're ripping down an old house and there's a whole other issue. But again, if. I understand your yeah, point. You're yeah, and if the, app, if the applicant wants to appeal it, there's got to be good reasons, you know, that we have our ducks in a row on this. So, 
if you feel confident that one of those criteria were not met, feel free to vote no. I just caution you but to vote no. But then there is the, but I mean, in reg also in addition to this, if this was up in North Darien, it wouldn't even be in front of us really because it would pass all the ticks. The reason it's here is because it's in the can. Well, no, this is for the division mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. create the real life. Oh. So, so if it was in North Darien, you're right, it wouldn't need to come back to the commission because it's not in the coastal area. Yeah. It's not the, it so is coming back to the commission this because when their actual when site plans. Yeah, exactly. Well, they, yeah. If if they sub if, if, if they, they subdivide, subdivide, and then apply whatever construction they're going to do, that would have to come for another lot. Also, just to be clear, this subdivision cannot go through into the house gets torn down. That's correct. The house they and can't the barn. file the map. Uh, the house and the barn. The barn might need to go as well. I'd have to take a closer mm -hmm. look at the plans relative to the setbacks for the barn. So the, the, the legal process is they had to knock down the house, then file the mylar. Correct. And then you get your subject, now you give you two lots, and then eventually someday and somebody will commission. probably come back to return on commission right. to right. site a house on those two lots, either within the existing envelope or outside the existing envelope. I would claim doubt hardship. highly that the CBA would approve construction outside the building envelope, to be honest with you. <laughs> Say, say that again, Jeremy. I would doubt that the ZBA would approve construction outside oh, of the building I, envelope. I doubt very much so. Yeah, you're right. But you remember the building envelope is it's like a triangle. Yeah. Well, they're creating it though by subdividing. I, I okay. That's so the, there's a great record here that you know we're the scrutiny that we're putting under it, and that will be clearly looked at by ZBA. Right. Yeah, they're creating the hardship if if they claim the hardship, basically. Correct. <laughs> right. They, they, it's a hardship that you create. Yes. Yeah, so they sell create. the lot, and then a new owner is going to is going to say, "I didn't um, create I, it, this hardship." I, yeah. I, knowing the ZBA is is constituted today, would be extremely reluctant to grant a variance. Well, it goes beyond who it constituted. It, it's again how ZBAs are been right. forced. I mean, we discussed this in some other areas right. that ZBA is very, very reluctant to grant hardships, and they have right. to be proven hardships. Right. That, uh, the, the way the court cases have come down recently is ZBA variances are highly scrutinized, and you better have a darn good reason or the court's going to overturn it. So there's like a huge level of scrutiny. So I guess we're at, I'd like to get a sense of the meeting and then kind of figure out which way we're going on this. We have a draft. Right, it's resolution. Positive uh, draft yeah, resolution. positive draft resolution. So, those who would be so inclined, given that we've kind of gone through these factors, to vote yes and support the positive resolution. Do, does this? When, when is this uh, due for? When are we? It's not due for a while. The hearing just closed uh, two weeks ago. All right. I want to. I want to. You want to table? My bad that I did okay. not look better okay. at this. Okay. I want to take a little bit better of look at this vis-a-vis -vis the, the regs to, to okay. make sure I'm perfect. There. Okay. Um, I'm more than happy given the comments I heard, and maybe you could do that, Steve and Liz. I will too, yeah. Okay, so we'll just yeah. push this to the next meeting. Okay. Uh, yeah, June 4th, June 11th. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in a second. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, deliberation only on the following, and I'm just going to read the, tech, the title text Amendments to Zoning Regulation, CSER 1 is 2019, and the Darien Zoning Map, CSEM 1 2019. Put forth by the Darien Planning and Zoning Commission and number 12, amendments to the zoning map CZM 3 2019, put forth by the Darien Planning and Zoning Commission. Okay, so we started deliberating. Um, didn't we go through basically all 12 of these? We didn't really talk about the MU zone. We, we talked about some of them okay. are more straightforward. I think. Uh, what do you need them. from us, I guess, is my I question. I think we could go through one by one okay. and get a sense from the commission okay. uh, in terms of these 12 changes uh, where you want Fred and I to draft something up and for us. Yeah, and then we'll talk about that separately. Okay. Okay. What about the service business zone, which is... Uh, we'll, try to, we'll try to tackle that now. Okay. I just want to keep the MU discussion along with the next item, if possible, just so okay. we don't get in the same issue that we did at the public hearing, which I screwed up on. Um, 
address the existing convenient food service by issue by creating new restaurant categories, which would not limit or restrict indoor seating. So this this is an issue that came up with a uh, new development down in the Roten. Correct. Um, so I think it was something that we, as a commission, right. told was the applicant. Um, at the time we'd look at it, uh, we've gotten a lot of public comments regarding lack of seating in some of these con convenience food service restaurants. Not only one restaurant, but it's been a few of them. Mm -hmm. um, so, so are, you, are, you are you talking about the Roost application? Roost and, and Sono Baker. Sono Baker, yeah, those, right, are right, the, right. those are the two that come to mind. But and Roost, you may recall, sent a letter of support yeah, for yeah, the changes. Yeah. So okay. um, I'm in favor of it. I am too. I am too. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Combining certain business zones within the community. So let's skip A. Combining the, it will go to B. Combining the OB, DOR1, DOR5 zones to a newly created design office DO zone. So again, the given the. Of that. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, no okay. issue. Okay. Thank you. If they're no brainers, just yeah. blurt it out. Combining the DB1 and DB2 zones into a newly created DB zone. Again, mm -hmm. I think it's not there. Okay. All right. So now we go back to A. Combining the SB and SBE zones to the service business zone. And, um, okay, so that was clearly the one that we got uh, beyond the MU zone change. This one was just as uh, we got a lot of public comment. All right. And to reiterate, that was the one that was the um, rings end. Yeah, yes, yeah, cross from rings end. It, com it gets combined with where? Correct. What's the name like of the, the furniture Heights. store? Not Norton Heights. Um, um, wait. wait well, like service the business. There's Puritan, Roost. No, but service business zones. There's Springdale Floors. Mm -hmm. There's the service business zone, which is on Roten Avenue, the three gas stations, mm -hmm. that area. There's the area which is Rings End and across the street from Rings End. Mm -hmm. Those are the and then there's a fourth service business area, which is Nielsen Florist and the Gardner Center. That is the fourth service business area. Service business east, we'll call it Bertucci's TD Bank. Down by Bertrand. Right, right, down right, right, down right. Town. Okay. And the big difference, I mean, I think the one that creates the most discussion is the restaurant size limitation between two. Right. Correct. Service business has a minimum size. And if you just read that, Jeremy. Jeremy. For service business zone is section 660. And as a principal use requiring a special permit, section 664B says by special permit, restaurants provided that at least 1,200 square feet of indoor space shall be devoted to customer tables and seating area. Okay. Service business east, which is section 670, Hmm. Also has that requirement. Restaurants provided that at least 1,200 square feet. But I think one of the issues was we had talked about. Wait, it doesn't sound eliminating right. that. If I no. Fred, you remember? Yeah, yeah, both. both yes, that's correct. Yeah, both both the SB and S. Um, the end of just. I'm sorry, but the end of Five Mile River Road. Where the White House Cafe or Tavern is? Neighborhood, neighborhood, neighborhood business. Neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. Let me check yes. this, John. Right. Yeah. Where's but yes, both the SB and SBE have that minimum 1,200 square foot right. now I'm lost for customers. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. lost too because yeah, I, thought I thought that was one of them does it. Yeah. I thought SBE does it. Let me just double check. Well, I think both. SBE. You can punt this the next week also. They both do. No, that has 1,200. They both do. So what is the difference? I thought there was more than there. The issue was clearly this part for the Yeah. And I just don't remember why. All right. I'm in Unless you have a we'll circle back. Okay, back. They, okay, well let's let's move on. So that one gets a circle. Man. I I'm losing my mind then. <laughs> Okay. I'm just, it's getting late. Okay, change. let's let's not discuss it until we get the facts. Okay, skip fee three. Uh, okay, allow restaurants by special permit in three neighborhood business zones. We already, especially now that we're changing convenience food service, 
we're allow already allow um, we already allow the Okay. Okay. So I think this is a no-brainer. Three neighborhood business zones already have restaurants. We should allow. Yep. Okay. Allowing personal services by right in the DC zone. This is they'll call it the Ovani parking question that comes up nonstop. And Leroy West, which is the parking lot right now. Yep. No brainer. You had a question about it, but I think we answered that in the last time, right? Okay. Um, modify the parking requirements, add new parking requirements for certain categories. This is more administrative. Remind me, this one's... I think this will relate to, depending on these other changes, the commission may, like for example, quick service restaurant, there is not now a parking requirement. If the commission was to oh, allow that, okay. new, so, so we have to do these. It has to coordinate yeah, with the okay. other changes. Okay, okay, so that's the okay, okay. So this came up last time, Liz. And this I'll call you the driver of this, if it's if you find that fair. But the hotel motel yeah. in yeah. I don't okay, like so this is your issue. I'll call it delete certain parking requirements, such as for hotel motel or in, and for dinner theater. I think we're all in agreement. Dinner theaters just. Not obsolete. Obsolete. So we'll take that up. And have parking requirements to reflect the new categories of food service. Yes, makes no sense not to. Real letters, section 904, again, administrative. So what came up the last time, the hotel motel are in, um, a few of us said, well, maybe we don't feel comfortable in eliminating. So I'll let Jennifer, because I think you kind of led that, yeah, or but a couple you, of us did. But oh, you, you just... So really, you're, you're skipping to eight. Yeah. Because without eight, you don't. Okay. Yeah. Seven. I'm sorry. So yeah, both at seven and eight. Okay. Okay. So. I just think there could be an opportunity like a Roger Sherman Inn, which would fit nicely into the community. So I think not having that possibility would. Well, be can you get service. rid of hotel and motel, and just leave inn? I don't know because I think J House and Greenwich is technically a hotel. Even though you would say I don't it's know very specific. what the um, definitions are, you know. What are yeah? What are do yeah. we have a definitions well, for those? Or? Right now, it's one definition. Okay. Together, which is hotel, motel, or so they're in. synonymous in our rights. Yeah. Okay. It would be uh, kind of splitting hairs to differentiate. Yeah. I guess you could say motel is a one well, story. Jennifer, would you be comfortable like because someone can always petition to re-enter an inn? Oh, I'd rather just not go through that. Brain damage again. I mean, since we're doing it right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it, motel. I feel. So I like would I, rather yeah. protect the town by eliminating it and then require someone to go through the process of getting a, a, a new regulation. I think rather it's, than having hojos. I mean, no, you guys were here when Ho yeah. hojos was here yeah. when I was growing up. Yeah, but I mean, J House was still a hojo before it became a J House. Now it's like a destination. Right. But I would say, as someone who has family who lives across the country. We don't really have somewhere really nice like a Roger Sherman for them to stay. So if that opportunity presented itself, it would come to us anyway. Right, because it's a special permit, right? Yes. Right, but I don't want uh, like a commercial zone to get a hotel in it. Well, like you'd have tree. again. Just let's be clear around the regs, that would be a special permit review. Regardless, right? Correct. Right now, it's only allowed in on parcels of at least five acres, and I think it's only allowed in the service business zone. Okay. So he's already service like service business. Oh, <laughs> back up. That's the three service. we just circled. But just just for to, to Jennifer. Wait, wait, wait. Let's clarify that. Where? Okay. That's Duchess Darien Diner, yeah. Nielsen's Garden Center. Let me just double check. Yeah, but let's double exams. check that before. Service business allows hotels and inns. Okay. So okay. that's service business. Service business East does not. So it would be wild. Mm -hmm. Springdale that's Forest. That's why we're going back. Just, yeah. just uh, it would be the Ring Zend area. But you it need be, five acres. It would be five. So I don't even know if there's I don't any. know if you can find it. Maybe the office zones. Maybe. Yeah, I have to double check. I don't. Office zones, DOR. Mm, DOR does about, not. What about where? Shouldn't um, they, though? Well, that's. Shouldn't that's, it, that's though? I mean. That's, that's a different thing. I know. Yeah, office that's business, no. Okay. I, it, it's my recommendation that we don't change it, and I don't think the regs actually make sense of where it allows hotel, motel, or in. But I think it you, you kind of leave it status quo now because that's status quo. And then if you want to 
as a commission, because I don't think I'll be here at that time, go after the clarifying what zones, because I think of some of these suburban office areas, like even the one that's gotten redeveloped at the end of Birch Road, that could have been, I'm not advocating for it, of course, but one of those buildings could have easily been. Yeah. Uh, uh, Why don't we write it up as status quo yeah. and let us, let us chew on it? Yeah, yeah, okay. So that would be no change on this one. Just to Jennifer's point. Right yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. 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 But just to Jennifer's point, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but Jay House and Roger Sherman are apples and oranges. They are. I mean, they are. But if it was an office business, like one of those buildings, that'd be more Jay Housey, right? If it's if it's an antique old. on five acres, that's going to be Roger Sherman. Correct. Sure. And it'd have to again be in a business zone. You couldn't take a five-acre parcel in North Darien and turn right. it into an inn. So right. there's right. a lot. It's, you know, it, conceptually, it's even yeah. hard to figure out where this would go. Right. But so let's, in my mind, let's kind of just table this one, write it up with no yep. change. And then if you guys want to kind of reconcile right. that, that would be, right. I think, not fine. the way to go. I mean, as much time as we put into this, you're going to find these kind of quirks along the way, I think. It's pretty awesome. I still want to, just as the last word, say that I think that removing it is more of a protection and would never prohibit someone with an antique coming forward and maybe getting five acres. I, I, I think I might, I might be hallucinating, but years ago, Mr. Rand, wasn't there something on Five Mile River that was an inn or proposed to be an inn, one of those old houses on Five Mile River Road? I don't know. I'm, I could be completely oh, hilarious. There was a place on the Post Road. Down there was a post and and I and no, I don't really house, see so. that occurring mm -hmm. now because all the mm -hmm. postal properties are pretty residential. Well, again, you need, you need five acres. But yeah. correct, well, you know, so you I, I'd rather three. have a a guy. But you're not in the business zone, so it could right. never be done. Right. Uh, I would rather have somebody come in and argue on a blank slate mm -hmm. that he that he wants to build a Me hotel. Too. Then okay. come in and rely on some big or convoluted written, 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 written in the yeah. 70s or 60s or who knows when. So, how would that come to us then? They'd have to do a reg change uh, proposal for that. For, like for we've that. seen yeah. and then, in the two and then years you'd have to approve that. What, and four then, and then yeah. No, there's been a bunch of requests. We've, requests. Oh, we've done dozens of reg change requests. I mean, no, we're, we're in the midst of That's what I'm saying. In the two years I've been here, I've seen a bunch. What? No, we had the. Uh, Dude, we've only invented with the two. With Baywater, we oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We invented yeah. two. We're planning for a perplex long yeah. scenario, right? Which yeah. is a senior <coughs> overlay. Yeah. So I could see that. I could see that. Right. So Where my point do? was let's remove Hotel Motel in. We That's currently that. have none. We don't anticipate wanting any right now. And if someone wants one in the future and there is some special, let. A lawyer come forward and ask for a right change. Well, or anybody. Um, yeah. Okay, so which would which open it up to the rest of the town at the same time. So not Correct. just for that particular site, but Correct. you're I just coming so. back to where we are now, basically. That's the problem. That's that's what I I don't oh, like taking also, regs right. away and then with the anticipation, oh, somebody could come in. Well, what, what do we want? Do we do we want to well, figure out a way to allow hotel, hotel, hotel motel or in no. or do we not so i hear a no i hear a yes i hear a I write it up as a status quo i hear a yes 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 no no so what do we got three yeah we're losing oh, two nobody's, nobody's losing no, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know. it's still coming from it's still it's coming four to two but i uh, okay i didn't i couldn't count I'm just, yeah, that's yeah. why I, okay four, yeah. so we're gonna go we're, we're gonna leave it status quo right now but it's definitely something to think of. Yeah, There's something not about. right about this reg. So um, instead of wiping it clean, think of ways we could yep. revise it. Okay. okay. And maybe we, we can could always move it to a different zone or no? Uh, we could, but not under this. You'd that have would to be a separate yeah. 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 okay. okay. So we went through seven or eight. Yep. Uh, greatly expanding uses within Darien office zones and allowing three story buildings and newly created office zone, reducing number of office zones from three down to one. Okay. Got that. Yep. Um, and then and the, the uses that that remember uh, right. Craig Flaherty's right. senior senior right. daycare like all those uses I, I, I think he brought in two separate letters okay. and I think we had incorporated some of the uses but 
I'll have to double check on okay, the daycare the that, that was part of the proposal. Yeah, yeah. It could be that the commission says, while we received the comment, it wasn't part of the proposal, okay. but we are open yeah, to that okay. suggestion. Okay. That'd be can, I, can I interrupt? He, he specifically spoke at three parkings about adult daycare. Where does regular daycare fit? I think he had sent a previous letter about child daycare and office zones, and well, I know that is... child daycare now, I keep calling it 80 Old Kings Highway, but it's... 85. 85. Across the street. The question is, do the proposed regs specifically call out that as a permitted use by special permit? Okay, so you're going to take all the uses that we actually threw in the proposal, put them in there, and then we'll, if adult the daycare is not included, then we'll have to put a, yeah. either a subsequent public hearing application, which the commission can do, and we'll put in positive language. Right. Plus our minutes right now will show it. Okay, uh, or the record will show it. Uh, clarify zones, which was specifically allowed parking structures. That was, uh, I think, part of the redevelopment projects. No, no, where you're driving. Sorry, to hit uh, 10 sorry. first. Uh, clarifying drive throughs what zones should allow drive through restaurants <coughs> and which zones should allow drive through or drive up banks. I think that we all went through. Mm -hmm. That was more clarification. Yes, go forward. Clarify which zones will specifically have parking structures. Again, I think with some reg changes, we just got to make everything consistent. 12 is okay. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you for. All right, so then let's go. Okay, so we're tabling SB right now. To right, we're going to. Yeah, you're going to clarify. I'm going to clarify. I'm going to okay. reread the record. Okay. I think I'll have to check where let's, that where that came from and how it came to be. Okay. But I think that's the only remaining issue that we can talk about. Yeah. We'll okay. talk about it next week. Okay, so now let's go to the MU stuff. All right, everybody good? Yes. Move on? Okay, so uh, the amendments to the municipal use zone modify section 420. These revisions are intended to clarify the nature of the MU zone as an overlay zone. And then, did you read that next item? Mm -hmm. Did you overlook the last one? Yeah, okay. okay. So, in the amendments to zoning max COZM number 3 2019. So, I guess I'll start this because I. Good luck. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What, what do you mean, good luck? <laughs> hmm. So, so. I don't in, know if I have any company. <laughs> uh, in discussions, in discussions um, with Jeremy and Glenn, I thought this was an opportunity to kind of rezone some of the municipal buildings, given that it's come up in the past, and instead of just cherry picking one by one, applying it as a. Uh, overlay versus a floating overlay and um, we got support from that or, or the proposal I should say not we the proposal got support from the Board of Education and the Board of Selectmen which controls virtually all the properties the only quasi properties are the firehouses which are you know, quasi municipal if you will um, and so uh, we got some definitely comments from neighboring uh, neighbors of Mostly Oxford School and the high school. Uh, we got comments from an attorney hired by those surrounding Oxford School, and um, I think that. Oh, oh, and Mr. Hill, who actually was uh, one of the people who wrote it in the intent. So, what we've done is, even though we, the commission, put the proposal in, we have the municipality, which is the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Education, which has care, custody, and control of the Board of Ed properties, support it um, with some neighbor opposition. I think that's kind of, I personally, I'll start, think it's, it eliminates a layer that has been used to push back on some projects. And Bruce hit on the, um, Old Town Hall homes, and he was right. I, I went back and I looked at some of the minutes and stuff, and there was a point where there was some confusion whether or not we could even apply it based on some of the opposition when it was clear as day we should be able to apply it for that property. So it just, it, there's a, it adds another step to these municipal properties if there were to be a project, which I don't think is necessary, but I'm only one of six. And so I hope I gave you kind of the background, my personal feelings, um, and I'll open it up to anybody else. I think the one thing I'll add to you, John, and this is my two cents, is that it also 
I think, increases the public input because any development would be a special permit, right? Any development, correct? Not just if they one. apply the MU. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So that was that was kind of why I liked it was because of that in, increased scrutiny. Whereas if a new building met all the regs, right? Obviously they wouldn't do this. They wouldn't, but it wouldn't be required public input at the PNZ level, right? Uh, yeah, they could do anything as a right, so. Correct. Um, so. school? Yeah, yeah kind of. Like, yeah. And, and by the way, we're not 100% sure it's going to be applied to Oxbridge. I, 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 I don't think we're even 75% sure. I, I totally get it. Um, so just uh, because it did kind of center around that property. Might even be less than 75% sure. I'm not sure at all. <laughs> but so then you're arguing it doesn't matter. Uh, I, I, I'm arguing it doesn't matter for that property per se, but in a future project. If I were sitting on the commission, I'd kind of want the the town. I mean, again, it's the municipality. It's not a private developer having to go through that extra step to just get the application of the MU through, um, and then talk about the project. And that's just the way I, I'm thinking. I want Kevin to repeat what he said before. What? So, so Jim, it, it, it right as it stands now. As long as you meet the reg, the regs, right? Because the town meets the regs. Because the town meets the regs. If you're if you're building a new school, new school. Right? right? You do not, at the P and Z level, have to have. It probably won't even come come across our our desk, right? Okay. It could. It could. But it could. It would go. It would go, it would go to. It was staff level. But if they didn't need a variance or you know anything like so that, so for example, we would never see the that. Oxbridge School is sitting in like a. Is that a one acre, two acre zone? And it had the setbacks, let's say they're, I'm pulling this out of the air, they 30 feet, them. they would still be within 30 feet. Right, it would right. be potentially, if it meets the setbacks and height and coverage, it's a simple site plan review, and there's not significant regrading. And the site plan review is, commission has to approve it if it meets the requirements. So Correct. We would, we so would, it's not, you don't get into the So just to be clear, it's the underlying okay. right. two acres yeah. which would be that area. residential. Hold on, hold on, don't talk yeah. over each other. Like a four Sorry. people talking yeah. all at once. So it would be the underlying residential for that school because that's in the residential zone setback rules. Correct. Because I remember the lawyer, I was just digging, looking for it, I guess it was Mr. Hill, I can't recall, had written, and they, they opened it up with saying, there's different setbacks with this and that at this school and this at that school in Tokeny, 10 feet in Oxford, 30 and only eight at Henley. And, uh, and I no, was no, like, no, oh no, my no, gosh. No, 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 that wasn't. That eight, wasn't eight, what letter was that eight, that I was reading how it's eight. like boom, 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 boom? They Mr. were all. Mr. Different. Maslin. Yes, Mr. Maslin. Yeah. Right. But it wasn't eight. Sorry, Mr. Maslin. <laughs> go, back to, go back to Kevin. So, so rather than rubber stamping, the site plan review, right? We would actually have. A Don't call it a rubber stamp. It's a just that you gym, understand. Yeah, what yeah, yeah I do. I just want to make it mean. clear for the record. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but if it, but if it's special permit, as as would it be in the end zone, at, at end, end use zone, the then threshold our our purview is a lot wider and higher than it would be in a simple site plan review. Can and I? Since add, we're can can I just let me finish the thought. thought. Since we're since we engage in public hearings and so on and so forth, would that also not give the, the, the citizenry more opportunity to have input into an approval it would, by P and Z? It, a special permit hearing will allow we'll give the them citizenry a forum. A to, forum that's to, my point. Yes. Okay. So, so yes. yes. Well, right. I got for a second. I got for a second. Correct if I'm wrong. A school is permitted as of right in any zone. In, in all in residential, residential That's correct. So if if Tokenic School is permitted as of right in that school, it does. What Kevin's point is, it doesn't require a special permit application. Correct. And if, if you today. switch it today, today but if you switch it to an MU zone, it requires a special permit. Application. Well, it, if they're developing pursuant to that, they would have the option of developing it's as of right. It's a, right. So they would have the option of how they wish to develop. So that wipes out his point. I think it, I think it's important also to know. Hold on, that yeah, it's a good. That's an important. It's, a, it's an important. You, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I know you so know. let me let me explain it or ask it. If the if the MU zone is grounded, and the town does not pursue the use of the MU zone on that grounding, 
they can still go the as of right route. Correct. Okay. And so your special permit application is direct. In which case, what but applies? The threshold is different. Then. No, it's not. It's the same. It's, it, 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 guys, it, think of it as the town doesn't have to go through the step of getting the MU zone uh, applied to individual properties. It will be blanket applied if we were to pass this to all municipal properties and the fire departments. But, um, they, but they'd have the option to opt out? Correct. Yeah. To not, the overlay. Yeah. Right. So for the bit closest example we have is now in the DB1, DB2 zone. If you think of the area by between Maplewood and Brian McKay's building with the Salt Cave, mm -hmm. Christman's, that's really in DB1, DB2, but it also has the DBR overlay, which allows condominiums. So that's how Villager Pond got built. Okay. So when the condominium developers came in, they said, well, we can either do DB1 development, small commercial building, or use the overlay to build condos. They said, we want to build the overlay with condos. That required a special permit. So in this case, if it becomes an overlay zone, let's take Hinley School or Home School, any additions and alterations in the future, if it complies with the underlying zone they're in, they're good site plan only. If they say, well, we want the special leniency in terms of the height, the coverage, or the setbacks, they could choose to develop under the overlay zone, require a special permit, which kicks it into a public hearing. Okay, now, just to clarify, because I'm slow, if they, if they want to develop under the, without the overlay, then they have to conform to the setbacks of its, if it's a, uh, R2 or R1 or whatever, they have to conform to those. It's, it's also important to note that the special permit review would apply to the, if the commission was to apply the overlay to these 13 properties, yes, the special permit would apply. But the special permit also applies under the current MU situation where it's a floating zone, and that floating zone is applied to properties on a case-by-case -case basis. So, so you would have to, as a commission, actively ground the zone on individual properties. So you have to grant them permission to use the overlay. Which is exactly. what was done on Which at Old for Town Hall the Hall. library, Old Town Hall homes, and the police station. And then they came the, in with the municipal that. overlay is going to have a standard new setback that's... No, no, that was proposed no. by Mr. Maslin, but we haven't even gotten to that point yet. Oh, okay. Um, but I don't think that wasn't even part of that our wasn't proposal, part of the proposal, so we wouldn't be able to do that. Um, so again, think of a grounded municipal use zone that is applied to every municipal property. It eliminates a step if the municipality needs to implement it. They don't have to apply for it and then go forward with the specific building application and site plan. Um, to that point, but they could apply at the same time. Yes. Like everyone yes. else does. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they, everybody else doesn't because they don't have the ability to use the MU zone. But when, you know what I'm saying, like when well, people come, they can put their two applications forward. What two, though? I'm, that's where I'm going to So this would please. be a municipal overlay option plus yeah. the site plan. What's your example, though? Um, Old Town Hall Hall. Old Town, uh, yeah. And they also don't oh, Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, you said people, got it. So Like if an applicant comes... Previously, the municipality came with both applications. Mm -hmm. Again... Those were approved three for three, I guess, right? Correct. Um, or we can just do it so they, the municipality can come forward and do it and use that option. The, the objections that I heard, and I, I, and I know that, that the, the heat is, is on this whole Oxridge, is it going to, is it not going to, whatever. Um, but if the if they opt for whatever the zone is now, mm -hmm. the underlying zone, which is relatively liberal, I, I'm sorry, relatively conservative mm -hmm. in terms of setbacks, building heights, and so on and so forth, which I think is the hot button. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know this is, I, I, I don't want to focus on Oxridge, but I'm, I'm trying to think of in terms of, of what's got people excited. 
Um, and then, but if, if we adopt the municipal use zone, then either they adhere to the relatively conservative setbacks or they got to come to us. Correct. And, yeah, and, and I'm, I guess I'm in favor of whatever gives the public the greatest opportunity Correct. to stand up and say Indeed. What, what, they, what they want. And if that's the MU zone, then I'm all for the MU zone. Not again, to again, no, that the I, public I, wouldn't have yeah. input onto the project like they do now when they have the Oxbridge planning. Sure, and they got the. It only kicks in if they use it. Yeah, it only kicks in if they use it. Token excluded if they use it. Can I can I respond? Mr. Rand brought up an interesting point, though. Since we're talking about Oxridge, you heard a lot of arguments that you're going to re. If you don't pass this, that you're going to hear again when they if they were to go implement it. You're going to hear the same exact arguments. And indeed, one or two people, I think one who sits on the building committee, actually said, "I'm not for." Implementing the MU zone at, at this specific property, and okay? He's, and, he's well, and he's a neighbor, yes. A neighbor. But that's my point. So you're going to go through that discussion totally. again Either on way. that specific property. So I'm just trying to be fair to all, like, again, it came up to be cherry picking. Why do we, you know, why do we only implement it here and the rest of the schools we don't? Um, and so, again, this was a kind of a, uh, what, what word am I looking for? a proactive way of us applying this, which I think is an awesome tool, and I don't think any of us disagree with that, at all, you, the option of applying it at all municipal properties so that you eliminate one of the steps when you go forward to this. And I would say, though, we have tried to separate these kind of zone changes from the applications by at least one or two meetings because the confusion it causes I think we even did that. So, again, it's I'm not going to be sitting around when uh, when we're here. But I think it's a, it, by applying them as a grounded instead of just floating property by property, it's going to help the commission. It's going to help the municipality. I think it helps even the neighbors to have some clarity as these projects start off the ground, where you know where they should be centered. Because remember, we talked a lot about setbacks, but you could also, it, it's a, I, I keep going back to Old Town Hall Homes. It was a huge tool in favor of the neighbors so that we could kind of move the density away. Um, so I'll leave it at that. I just, I want to try to get a sense of the meeting. We don't have to decide it tonight, but um, I'm in favor of it, clearly. I'm in favor of it. I'm in favor of it. Three, four. We're not going to vote on it tonight. Right, right, we're going to we're going to no, keep it this part open after too. After this discussion, I, I I think that I am in favor. I just okay. as always want to avoid unintended yeah. consequences, and I just didn't want that overlay in regards to any of de any development within a residential zone. Personally, to loosen the underlying like well, that's going to loosen it. That 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 does right, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. would be the unintended consequence yeah. because maybe none of us well, are sitting here. But someone comes yeah. up and it's a residential zone and there's a new project, be it a school or Lord knows what. Well, well, well no, no, no. Let's be careful. Again, it's a municipality. It can't Correct. be any sort of... So the municipality of, yeah. comes forward with a yeah. new use of some, you know, one of their zones and well, they want to make building requirements... <laughs> Looser than the underlying zone. Okay, it, 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 it gives the it, it gives, negative. There's not an, It's an intended, in my mind, if for it's the municipality. Intended. It's intended to loosen. Okay, so right. think about it. Discuss it with staff if you have. Correct. So you can move it away from residential. You can move it away. You can put it in corners that there aren't any residences. You can add a little building height so you don't have to have coverage area. Like there's a lot of. A right. lot and they're going to come back and say the same thing. Yeah. Just just the right right right. Right. Okay. 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 So you are. Okay. So. So we'll we'll leave that right now. We're kind of leaning on going forward, but. I guess uh, I would say I'm yeah. on the fence at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Let's take a look at it. Yeah. So think about it, and we'll come back to this. This is good, though. This is not like this is. Those are hard. It's 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 again. It's there's no right answer here, guys. Um, it's how you how you look at it. Um, all right, approval of minutes, right? Yes. May seventh. I didn't see anything. Okay. Motion to approve.
minutes. Anybody else? Oh. Anybody else? Good going home. I'm so tired. Anything uh, else? Let's go to cafeteria. Hey, nothing? Okay. No, I didn't have any. Okay. Uh, motion to approve the minutes as submitted. Jennifer? Jim Rand. Yeah, May 7. Who's, who's, who's second? Jim Rand. Jim Rand did. I'm oh, sorry, Ms. Rand, all of you? Uh, May 14, yes, I again, I didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody have any comments? I don't see any. I no Can comments. I get a motion to approve as submitted? Approved as submitted. Liz, Mr. Rand, second. All in favor? Good. Four to zero, two Anything in the project status? So that was actually a bad one. Uh, Old Town Hall holds the zoning permit for the foundation was approved, so you're likely to see work starting out there very shortly with them working on the foundation. Nothing else? Nothing else. All right, how about uh, calendar. calendar? Calendar, we meet, the commission meets again next Tuesday, June 4th. We'll start with an executive session with town council to discuss pending litigation and then have a few public hearings. Uh, the meeting on the week after June 11th will be a general meeting. And then uh, the commission will meet for public hearings June 25th. Okay. Anything else? No, I. Very quickly, I want to introduce our intern for the summer, George. I figured that was I'm wondering what was going on. I thought he was the park guy. Yeah. George, where are you from? Uh, I'm local from there, yeah. Okay. Darian High School. Oh, oh you're the high no, school. No, he's now. the college intern. He's from oh, UMass college. Amherst. Nice. You like a lot of work. So, where are you? Where, where are you go to school? UMass Amherst. Oh, awesome. So, All right. Studying regional planning. I'm going to my second semester of master's. So, awesome. Good okay. luck with everything. Uh, Thank you. Uh, okay, Don't ask us any questions. These are the guys that are focused on. So, George wanted to see firsthand what it's all about. Oh, please. Oh. Vimeo. It's yeah. the best thing ever. Um, okay. Chairman comments. Uh, Steve and I went to the OPC meeting. I'll just leave it at uh, you might want to watch it. Um, I had to leave early, but Steve covered some things. I guess, you know, I, I like to share what happens at OPC, but this one, in this case, just watch it. Well, you got to know what OPC means, right? The top. Op Operations Planning Committee. Yeah, so it's Jamie, John Zagrodsky, Tara, um, myself, so and what Seth. Happened? When was it? Uh, they meet once a month. Oh, this is from last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so just, 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 just take a view if you want. See what happens. Last Wednesday. Um, okay. And then uh, I am probably going to resign as chair on the beginning of the six eleven meeting. Um, I've been pretty clear that I'm going to probably resign from the commission by July or August. Um, I'm sorry. You didn't put an application to run again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I might plan to be involved in another board in town. Um, we'll see if I get the nomination and uh, put in an application for the Board of Education. Um, so You're I would... Inc the fire. Yeah. <laughs> My wife is... I'll just leave it at that. Oh, <laughs> I think I'm nuts. Um, but uh, all kidding aside, if you guys... Uh, we're going to... Since I'm still going to be around... Uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to take an officer position. Um, so we're going to, I would love to kind of figure out who wants to be chair, vice chair, secretary. I'd like the five of you to like, have discussions and kind of figure out who's going to take what and so we can come to a vote. Um, you know, it's best that you kind of organize amongst yourselves and um, before we come to a vote. Um, I'm not so, in a meeting, that's all fine. Well, yes. You can't have a meeting with only. With Five people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't go five of you together. Sorry, I didn't. That that's not. But Did have conversations. Figure out who wants what, and then we'll we'll have a vote. Um, I guess hopefully the beginning of the six eleven general meeting. We can do that. I just want to make sure with these guys that there's nothing else. So you're resigning as chairman, but remaining on the commission until your term's up in November. Nope. Uh, I hope to resign well, from the commission. Um, in six eleven. Oh. Uh, no. Resign as chair 611 and resign from the commission a few weeks later. Just uh, we're there, the RTC has nominated somebody for the election, so they have somebody teed up, if you will, that can step in. This is election. like a farewell tour that goes on. No, I'm trying not to. I'm, I'm trying not. So this is this is this is it. So you were going to try to get new officers by June 11th. 
It's so, and the RGC will nominate someone that gets assigned? Uh, so what happens, just it, it, when my resignation, uh -huh. then you, uh, the five of you, um, get to appoint somebody of the same party. That's how the rules work. Until, no, 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 but who gets to? Until his term is done. You appoint, we appoint somebody to yeah. fill the balance of his yeah. term. Yeah. Correct. When he's that done. That the RTC brings then, forward to then us. Then they have to uh, rerun yeah. they have to choose. It's, guys, it's your, the RTC has somebody for election selected. Because the election's so close to my resignation, it's, I, you, it's gotta be your choice. But you're missing a step. But you're going to appoint, you are the ones that appoint the person, right. so. But we have one choice. No. no. The okay. person gets nominated by the first selectman. No, 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 no absolutely not. Let me, let me make this clear. The RTC nominated. Yeah, the R, hold on, let's separate the two. Let, if there was an election, you would just appoint somebody, okay, of the same party. Right, okay? you got it. Because there's an election so close, the RTC has been going through their own nominations process and has found a potential candidate. So, in essence, they have somebody who's very interested in serving. It's not their say for that appointment period, but it'd be really weird if they selected somebody and then the commission selected somebody else to appoint, okay? Right. Because that welcome, person's gonna be- You're welcome to appoint anyone you wish. Yeah, yeah. I don't know certainly, you can interview them whenever you wish. You can't appoint somebody else. No, That's no, I'm candidate. saying I, but yeah. you're, the RTC is presenting this person that they were going to run. You're going to interview that person and assume that they are suitable for the role. It's your final decision. It's just got to be a it's Republican. Like any other Republican. Right, there's just one person that's coming forward. No, the well, there, there might be others. There might be an, a Republican. Ah. Yeah. Any Republican yeah. Can, yeah. can come or, in and petition and, for that and, role. And, and, one of them will be nominated by the RTC. Yes, yeah. got or it. Independent. Yeah. We, when I got on, we had, there were like four or three people going for one spot. And, <laughs> yeah, and, you, and he had five people step up. I remember Now, again, they weren't so close to the election. They were, they were a lot further away. So, okay. so, again, it's this commission's role to appoint somebody until the election. I only bring up the RTC because they have found a very interesting person. And the same with the chairman. I will not be Chairman here. is so all you guys. Yeah. Yeah. We do that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I told you that, right? Out on the 4th. I will be here on the 11th, and I will be here on the 25th. Perfect. And there's no new business, right? No other okay, business. Okay, so motion Wait, we're here business. the next three weeks in a row, correct? No. Motion to adjourn. Two. So moved. So Second. 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 All in favor? Fourth. Good night, TV 79. Yes, all in favor. Good night. Bye.